I'd like to talk to you about a home loan. I'd like to I'd like to talk to you about a home loan. So he's the we had this gigantic swipe file called Wow Central, and it is the Web page for the lost treasure. Dating to transform.
Hi, JD here. Uh, well, my name is John Dwyer, but I get JD, okay, So, and lots of other names, unfortunately. Thank you for joining us on this uh, Facebook Live, and we're doing it in a fancy studio environment because I want to actually show you a few uh, slides and graphics on the screen. So if you are a business owner, I think you're going to enjoy this. I think you're going to see a whole brand new way of attracting leads to your business, both online and offline, but mainly online. It's the world that we live in these days. And despite uh, a few wrinkles here and being around the block a few times, I think that I would match it with the best when it comes to uh, advising you on how to get customers or clients online or how to get prospects, how to get leads, okay? And why do I say that? Because I've been around the block a few times. Um, I used to be you know, basically the, uh, I guess, the secret weapon that McDonald's and KFC and News Limited and uh, Channel 9, uh, Blockbuster Video, when there were video stores and 7-Eleven, those big companies used to pay me quite a sum of money to attract what they wanted, and that was avalanche leads. They felt that they could convert people as long as we could give them avalanche leads through a drive through promotion if it was a fast food chain or it might be a big bingo game, if it was a newspaper or magazine and so forth. Um, and what I've done is I've picked up the formula that I used to use in the old world, bricks and mortar world, and put it into the online world and kaboom. It's crazy. I was going to say kaboom. It sounds like Batman, doesn't it? Kazam, kaboom. Uh, it's gone nuts for the clients of ours who do it properly. And I'm going to reveal that to you tonight. The good news is you're going to get all this stuff for free. Uh, and uh, on Facebook Live, as you know, the great thing is it's for free. And I'm also going to uh, give you a, a few hints and a few tips on how you can do this as well. Now, first of all, why am I doing this? Why would I put this whole thing together on Facebook Live? Why, why, why would I do this? Is it because I love you and that I'm Mother Teresa's nephew? No, <laughs> I'm doing it because it's a potential money-making procedure. You know, if I owned a fish and chip shop, I would be having hosts and hostesses outside the fish shop at lunchtime and uh, at dinner time, and they'd be handing out calamari samples. It's called taste testing. And Nobody does it. Nobody does any taste testing. And they wonder why Amazon is here to kill them and basically wipe them out. Because the thing is, is that Amazon really are... Look, let me ask you this. Do you see any hamburger stores on the corner anymore or milk bars? No, you don't. A thing called 7-Eleven came along and completely wiped them out. And Amazon's about to do that with a lot of businesses worldwide. Okay, They've already done it with a lot of businesses. Have you heard of Toys R Us lately? Yeah, Toys Were Us. Okay, They're gone. And there'll be more and more of those because, well, people aren't doing things, um, I guess, what would I say, in a direct response fashion. Uh, if I asked you, look, do you think that you need to have a good product or service to make money? Uh, and I say that when I'm holding seminars. Um, people will say, yeah, of course, we need to have a good product or service. And I go, good. Do you think McDonald's makes the best hamburger in the world? And, you know, there's a lot of people would argue that they don't. And yet they sell more hamburgers than all the other hamburger joints joined together. And why? Because they understand marketing. They understand marketing. So therefore, I, if you've got a bit of paper in front of you at the moment, write down that the marketing of what you do is 100 times more valuable than what you actually do. So you've got to understand that, okay? Um, now listen, if you're online at the moment, I want to ask you a question. Uh, and that is so I can sort of, you know, I guess structure uh, this Facebook Live accordingly to who we've got online. Can you just type in the comments box below B2B, that you're a B2B business, business to business, or B2C? So just let me know and I'll be looking at my phone. I've got my little trusty phone here that I can look at whilst we're going through the whole thing. And if uh, I find that I've got more B2B businesses on board, then I'll, you know, I'll probably, I guess, give a lot more emphasis to that. And so therefore, we can just type in B2B. I see quite a few coming through now, which is good. Okay, so let me just ask you this. Do you understand what direct response marketing is? Do you understand what that is? Uh, it's pretty much, as it says, direct response. Okay, It's uh, about putting a Facebook ad on today and knowing by tomorrow whether it worked. It's likewise Instagram, likewise LinkedIn, likewise newspaper, radio, television, brochure, whatever you want to do. Okay, Direct response marketing is all about getting a direct response. And there's a lot of advertising people out there that have come from, if you like, a branding background that will tell you it's all about getting them to fall in love with your brand and then they'll taste your product. Uh, here at the Institute of WOW, which is my business, that's it there, uh, with the little WOW logo, we're all about flipping that model, which is the conventional model of getting someone to fall in love with your brand so that they'll taste your product. My model is flipping that on its head and getting people to taste your product so that they'll fall in love with your brand. And uh, you don't need to be branding and selling stuff 
uh, they don't have to be mutually exclusive. It can be done together. Now, I had a client uh, some years ago, and it was probably my largest client for some years. I don't have them now. I moved on to doing smaller businesses. But this was the Greater Building Society, which was the 250th biggest business in Australia. Not as big as the big four banks, but a reasonable size financial institution. And we revolutionised the business because what we did is we took the eyes off the interest rate. And what you're going to learn in this particular presentation this evening is how you can take the eyes of your consumer or your prospects off the price. You do not want them to buy on price. Well, you do if you're Big W or Kmart or Walmart, and you probably do if you're a $2 you know, shop down the road. But most of us, we want to retain margin. So you want to take their eyes off the price and onto uh, the value. Now, McDonald's have done that for a long while. We've got uh, my wife, Gail, and myself. We have six children, and they're adults now. But at one stage, we had six kids under 12. And in the back of the Tarago, they were screaming that they wanted a Happy Meal. Now, McDonald's would have got out of us throughout those years about $6 billion on Happy Meals, and they had nothing at all to do with the hamburger. The kids didn't even eat the hamburger. It was everything about the toy, because McDonald's were clever enough for many, 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 many years right up till now to take our eyes off the price and onto the toy, okay, to shut the little rat bags up in the back of the Tarago. That's what you want to do. From tomorrow onwards, no matter what business you're in, whether you're B2B or B2C, you want to take their eyes off the price, okay? Uh, look, so that I get a vote on that, by the way, if you think that uh, uh, price discounting is a waste of time, put down in the comment box, I agree. Price discounting is evil, okay? Unless you are big W. Unless you've built your business around price discounting, you don't want to do it. Now, let me say this to you. Um, the thing is, is that, uh, you know, one of, the most, one of the most frustrating things I see these days when we're looking after helping businesses with marketing is uh, a lack of collecting data. And, of course, we all wonder why Amazon's here to basically take over because they are the experts at data. Even when they were just a bookstore, they would say, well, if you like that Mills and Byrne book, then you might like this. Uh, Mills and Byrne love stories were my favourite uh, books, of course. I have a lot of Fabio books at home. And uh, they would say, well, John, if you like that, then you might like this love story. And, of course, I would buy all the other love stories because I'm into that sort of book. Uh, and so, therefore, they were exercising what we call behavioural marketing. They worked out what your behaviour was and then they tried to flog something else to you that fell underneath that behaviour. Uh, you can't do that unless you collect data. And if I said to you, speaking of McDonald's a moment ago, where I gave them a big rap, if I said to you, well, listen, do you think McDonald's were a pretty good marketer? You probably would say, yeah, they are. They're, they're a great marketer. And, you know, conventional wisdom would be from most people, yeah, look, they're a good marketer. But you know what? If I was running McDonald's, I would sack their marketing person tomorrow. And the reason I would is because today they're going to have 1.7 million people in Australia through their McDonald's stores and they have no clue who any one of them is. They don't collect any data. Now, whilst you're waiting there for supposedly that fresh hamburger to be made these days, they actually give you a receipt. Why they don't get you to put some details on that receipt to win a prize or even just a text to win a prize, I'll never know. But they have 1.7 million people today slipping through their fingers because they don't collect any data. It's crazy. But wait for it. You can go into any restaurant in Australia. You can go into any retailer in Australia. Bunnings, you can go to Woolworths, Coles, you can go to Baker's Delight, you can go to Michelle's Patisserie, you can go anywhere you like and no one will ask you for your details. Can you imagine restaurants? We have a restaurant in uh, Melbourne as a member of our WOW program. They are the only restaurant in the world that's full 364 nights a year. It would be 365, but they're not open on Christmas, okay? And it was really easy. We just fill the restaurant because we actually incentivised the staff to uh, get 50 cents every time they got a name and contact detail. So at the end of the meal, and you know, basically someone was going to pay the cheque, the staff would just put out a little name and address entry form to win a dinner for six at the end of the month, and it would just say name, email, and the most important thing, mobile number. And uh, they've got thousands on the list at the moment. And I've been there to watch this happen. So what happens is that the owner of the restaurant calls his PA in and says, listen, can you tell me what percentage are we running at at the moment, occupancy? Uh, and she'll say, oh, well, on a tablet, yeah, look, we're running at the moment 180 seats. We're, we've got 90 seats full. And he goes, well, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We better fill the other 90 seats. Send out one of JD's text messages. And I put together a suite of text messages for them. And one of them might be, you know what, Chef Pierre would like to give you a fantastic offer tonight. And that is uh, a lobster tail meal for two for $68. Now, when you come into this restaurant, it's a very expensive restaurant, by the way. It's uh, called the Lobster Cave in Melbourne. And so, therefore, nobody leaves less than $200. And uh, the guy that runs this is a good pal of mine now. Uh, and Bill Ferg, his name is. Lovely guy, real entrepreneur. And uh, what he does is that he simply sends out to a 1,000 of his 
20, 30, 40,000 less, this offer, and within 10 minutes, she walks back in the PA and says, we're all booked out. So all the seats are gone within 10 minutes because they've sent out that text message. The most important thing you should be collecting today as a business owner is not the email. You're lucky if you get a 10% open rate on you know, a cold le email list, but you'll get a 94% open rate on SMS messages within three minutes. Why would you even be thinking about email? That's bedrock, okay? So therefore you should be taking advantage of this thing here. Uh, and that's how he fills his restaurant. Every afternoon he simply sends out an offer and when people come in for that special deal, they end up buying a bottle of wine, they get dessert, they buy entrees and all the stuff that goes with it. They don't leave unless they've paid $200, but he's got them in with the special deal at that time. Okay, so therefore, look, uh, I have got, uh, let me see, uh, I've got a few people on here. Let me put my specs on before we kick off and just answer a few questions. Uh, let me see, uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -dum. No, I can't see any sensible questions. There's a few sledges on here, so therefore I'm not going to read them out, of course, but uh, no, can't see any sensible questions. Sorry, I'm sorry, could you ask a sensible question? If it's a sledge, I'm not going to make a big deal out of it, am I? Um, okay, so let me just, uh, let me just uh, kick off. Uh, what I want you to do is know that what this is all about this evening is what you're about to see on your screen right now. Uh, it's uh, an avalanche lead uh, thing, okay, and it's all about online. So therefore, this is, if you get it right, it's all about getting, uh, you know, a rocket fuel system for your business that can change your business. It's not about getting 10%, it's about getting uh, stupid numbers, and I'll show you some of those stupid numbers. I know because this is online, you're sitting there thinking, oh yeah, you know, what a wanker. I mean, this this stuff can't be true. There's no way you can get all those. I'll prove to you it's true by giving you case studies, okay? Uh, because I'm the same sceptic. When I sit there and watch things online, I think to myself, oh, come on, please, you know, tell me the truth. Uh, all of this stuff has happened, and I'll prove it to you. Okay, so what we're going to cover... Uh, it's a number of things. Number one, Facebook avalanche lead generation. Uh, Facebook, of course, is more popular than organics at the moment, so therefore I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you how to turn your website into a 24-7 sales machine. Uh, most people have a website that's an information portal. It's not a sales portal, so that's what that's all about. I'm going to teach you how to not compete on price. You don't want to do that. And I'm going to teach you, of course, how to get customers to come and stay forever. Now, the only way you can do that, of course, is if you collect that magic four-letter word starting with D, which is data. And this all adds up to you know, what I've called uh, the avalanche leads formula, okay? It's all about attracting people, it's all about converting them and then keeping them. And you can only keep them if you have some sort of reward scheme, okay, whereby you've collected their data and then you give them incentives for coming back and back. These are the businesses that uh, have paid me a few dollars over the years uh, to provide this sort of stuff to them. And I guess this is what you would call the cred build component of, uh, of this. And uh, yep, you'll see some big names there. And uh, this one is the one that a lot of people say to me, look, that has to be BS. Uh, this is how I got 812,000 phone calls for a business in just one week. Uh, what we did is we put together a phone bingo contest uh, for New Idea Magazine uh, and for TV Week. And you'll see on your screen right now, uh, there's two bingo cards there. So basically, you know, a couple of million of these bingo cards dropped out of those two magazines. And uh, what happened is that in order for you to have a chance of winning those prizes, you needed to ring a 0055 number. And uh, every day there would be a new recording of a call routine. So today when you rang, it might have been numbers 4, 17, 24, 88. And you'd mark those off on your bingo card. And then we would make sure that you were teased that by two or three days into it, you had three of the four symbols you needed to win the big prizes. Well, guess what? The result of that was is that we got 812,000 phone calls in uh, just one week, okay? And uh, about 3.2 million over four weeks. I was getting 18 cents a call at the time. Uh, and uh, so therefore we had 576,000 in revenue come in and my costs by the time I produced the bingo cards and gave away the prizes was probably about 150. So there was good margin in it. But guess what? Just when I thought that was the retirement package, uh, the government who gives you permit numbers to run these contests actually decided that we're affecting their state lotteries. Yeah, the scratch lottery. So they decided to bring in a, a rule which said that you couldn't run bingo contests over the phone. So that retirement package went out the window, damn it. Uh, and so therefore I had to you know, scratch my head and come up with other ideas then. But uh, we ran it twice. We did quite well out of it before they changed the laws. Uh, what I thought I'd show you in terms of a wow factor uh, and taking people's eyes off the price, this happened to be a, uh, a bank, a building society, the Greater Building Society. And what we did is that we decided to sell home loans by giving away a free holiday with the home loan. And that went nuts, it tripled their home loans very, very quickly. And then a few years into it, we decided to get this guy involved that you're seeing on your screen right now. Uh, and that is uh, Jerry Seinfeld. So therefore, I know you're not going to get Jerry Seinfeld. I know you're not going to get Jerry Seinfeld. But the fact of the matter is, is that uh, I was able to convince him uh, to come out of
out of retirement and act as the spokesperson for the Greater Building Society. And uh, the results of that were pretty stupid. I'll show you one of the ads. Um, look, I guess you have to ask yourself, are you a challenger brand? I'm a challenger brand. I'm up against the big advertising agencies. I'm a challenger brand. And so therefore, I've got to do things differently. Uh, and I do. Uh, this wow factor direct response marketing is very, very different from what you'd get at an advertising agency. At an ad agency, you would go and you'd see, you know, the receptionist and you'd see fountains and you'd see motor cars outside that were Mercedes and Rolls Royces and all this sort of stuff. I have to fight that because most of those agencies are talking about building a brand. They're not talking about actually selling stuff overnight. And so I'm a challenger brand. Now, in your instance, there's every good chance that you are not the Coca-Cola of your industry, that you are a challenger brand. And if you're a challenger brand, you need to be like Richard Branson. Richard Branson, when he came to Australia, his tagline was, keep the air fair. Okay, what do you think he was telling us about Qantas? <laughs> what do you think he was saying? I think he was saying, well, they've been, you know, uh, charging you a little bit too much for their airfare. So his was keep the airfare, F-A-R-E, of course, uh, and he stole so much market share from Qantas it wasn't funny because he challenged them. Now, in the Greater Building Society's instance, we said, look, if you're being beaten up by the banks and charged all these fees and charges and so on and so forth and they're treating you like a number, not like a person, swap your home loan across to the Greater Building Society and we'll give you a free holiday. We'll just give you a free holiday, depending upon the size of your loan. Obviously, if it was a three or $400,000 loan, you might have got a week on the Gold Coast. If it was a million-dollar loan, you went around the world. And uh, when we got uh, Seinfeld involved, uh, some years into a very successful promotion, it just put wow factor on top of wow factor. So I'll play you the commercial, and I want you to understand that there is no price in this. For the 11 years that I marketed or looked after the marketing for the Greater Building Society as a consultant, they didn't advertise on price once. Can you believe it? A bank, home loans, not advertising an interest rate? They're the only bank in the world that never advertised an interest rate for 11 years in a row. Like, that is crazy. So don't tell me, oh, look, we've got to advertise on price. A bank got away with 11 years of just saying, get a home loan, get a free holiday. Let me play this commercial and you'll see the up anything about price. I'd like to talk to you about a home loan. Not for me, for you. I have a home. Get a Getaways Home Loan from The Greater. It could be the most fun financial decision you'll ever make. Just ask a Greater customer. When we shopped around for a home loan, we found The Greater had one of the lowest interest rates. And a free holiday with over 200 choices. And there were no catches. Get a Getaways Home Loan and go on a free holiday. Or loan us some money and we'll go on a holiday. Either way, someone's getting out of here. Okie dokie, me back again. So you see there, there was absolutely no mention whatsoever of, uh, of yeah, pricing. And so therefore, that went nuts. The results of that were, uh, I'll bring it up on the screen for you right now, uh, Seinfeld's campaign resulted in the greater tripling its home loan market share in the first two years. So in the first two years, they tripled their home loan market share. How would you like to have that happen for your business? Okay, it's all about challenger brand marketing. And before I start to get into the Facebook stuff and what have you, because I know you're interested in that, let me just show you how quickly you can change your business if you've got the right people around you. Uh, I've got a bunch of Gen Y millennial kids at the moment, and of course, uh, they think that, uh, you know, their parents, of course, are nerds and they know nothing. I'm trying to convince them, of course, that, uh, you know, you are your surroundings. And uh, we've heard so many times, haven't we? Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. I think that came from Jim Rowan. Uh, and it's nothing further from the truth. I mean, that, 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 that is absolutely the case. Show me, you know, the people you hang around with and I'll show you what your you know, business is going to look like. And uh, I know this sounds like a blatant plug, but we find that people inside our environment uh, tend to do things faster uh, because we help them. We actually provide them with a roadmap and they tend to sort of, you know, take the focus. I'm not saying never advertise on price. Don't get me wrong. I mean, David Jones and Meyer have a half yearly sale twice a year. They get rid of dead stock. OK, but you can't do that each week if you want to retain margin. Let me show you this. This happens to be uh, up on the screen at the moment, a, uh, a lollies and stuff shop here in, uh, well, in Sydney, not here in Sydney, I'm on the Gold Coast. And this is what it looked like. They would look fantastic inside, but on the outside, it looked pretty ordinary, as you'll see. Uh, and they specialise in international candy. In other words, you know, selling candy from around the world. OK, and uh, as it turns out, uh, it is a pretty popular store. But I said to them, look, you've got a real problem with the outside of your shop. The inside of it looks spectacular, uh, but the outside of it just looks pretty ordinary. OK, and so we fixed it. And this was fixed in a matter of weeks. And let me show you what happened. This is what it looked like afterwards. Okay, so therefore, let's just flip back again. This is what it looked like. 
and this is what it looks like now. I think you'll see that there's a bit of Disney influence in that. And when I sketched up personally what the outside of it would look like and you know, gave it to our art studio who put that together for them, the owner of that shop was blown away. That's the before and after. So this is what I talk about when I talk about wow factor. And if you think that is a pretty good uh, example of uh, shit to gold, <laughs> can you type into the comments box, I love lollies, okay, because I think that is a, a pretty appropriate phrase for uh, what we did. We made people love lollies. Uh, there's no way that you could walk past that shop without turning left or right. I've got a, uh, that's a nighttime shot of it, and uh, I think I've got a little video to show you what happened the moment that we turned on that new shop front. No other changes to the shop, by the way, and that shop front it was only about $7,000 to put all that together, and the owner of that particular shop, who's a member of my coaching program, got his money back within, I think, two days, okay? So it was a pretty good return on investment, that's for sure. Have a look at the, uh, the crowds that he was getting. Uh, admittedly, this was at a reasonable busy night. It might have been Thursday night shopping, but look at that. I mean, just nuts. People just pouring into that place. I can't give out numbers for confidentiality reasons, uh, but uh, the $7,000 investment plus the you know, few dollars that he pays for me to you know, be able to advise him on this sort of stuff, uh, he's getting back like many, 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 many fold, okay, in terms of the return on the investment. And this is one of the text messages he sent through to me, which was lovely, and he's got a few shops, and uh, that one is at the entrance in Gosford, you'll see. <laughs> They're up 77% on one day, and uh, his name is Darren, so I said, great news, Dazza. Now, this one here, I want to show this to you. We have a pizza uh, shop, uh, or a couple of pizza shops on board, and uh, they want to make a big deal out of home delivery. And this is the idea that I've given them. Uh, it is to actually have all of their home deliveries done by guys in dinner suits and white gloves. So we're going to be calling it the White Glove Home Delivery Pizza Service. So have a look at your screen right now, and you'll see exactly what that's going to look like. Now, the reason I'm showing this to you is because if you're sitting there as a business owner, and uh, it's a bit lonely, and you're thinking, oh, where do I get all these big ideas from? Well, you're at the right place, okay? Yes, it's a blatant, you know, blatant push on my stuff, but by the same token, uh, you're at the right place because I know what's going to happen. This is just about to launch, and I know exactly what's going to happen when somebody actually comes to the door looking like this. I'll bring it back up again. I'm telling you, people will be booking pizzas from them just to take a selfie at the door. And can you imagine, will they be able to spend, oh, sorry, charge more money for the premium pizza compared to Pizza Haven or Pizza Hut? Of course they will. Because can you imagine the guy rolling up, your door? instead of at the moment rolling up in a baseball cap backwards, chewing gum, maybe just put his cigarette out, cigarette, I'm not saying these people would do that, but I'm just saying a lot of them, you know, the deliveries for pizzas, uh, are not quite dressed like they should be. Uh, and they are chewing gum when they come to the door, they ring the bell, you give them the money or the credit card, whatever it is, and then they leave. Can you imagine in this instance, someone pulling up, you know, ringing the bell and looking like this, I think this is going to be nuts. I think it's going to be a big game changer. Okay, so therefore, this avalanche leads formula, let me just go through it uh, because you might be sitting there thinking, well, it won't work for my business because we are different. I sort of get people when they come to my, my events to sort of sign in blood that they won't come up to me at a break and say, oh, but my business is different because it's rubbish, okay? The point is your business is not different. What I'm about to show you in terms of a formula can work for any business. And you'll see there on the screen, I won't bother going through them, but it can work for just any business whatsoever, okay? And the question I would ask you, you know, do you want a predictive marketing system that lets you turn the tap on whenever you want? And uh, of course the answer is yes, it's a silly question I know, okay? So here's the formula, okay? It's a, it's a uh, basically a 12-step formula. Uh, I'm trying not to bore you by saying it's a 42-step formula. <laughs> it's not. Let me just go through it, okay? We call it the WOW Manifesto Client Attraction Formula, and there are 12 components to it. Number one, uh, basically who, why, and where. So it's a matter of determining who your most profitable customer is and then looking for more people who look like him or her. Really, really simple. So if you're selling upmarket wrinkle cream or wrinkle evaporation cream, and you're looking for wealthy ladies, then you're going to be looking for women probably 40 or 45 uh, age, uh, years of age and uh, women who, you know, basically live in the upmarket suburbs. Number two, uh, basically promote yourself as the expert, only if you are. I'm not asking you to make up stuff. You don't want your heart surgeon to do that. But if you are good at what you do, then promote yourself as the expert. I happen to believe I'm probably the best marketing guy in the country. So therefore, um, I've got no qualms about promoting myself like that. If I said to you before this, uh, before this particular Facebook Live, I was the 28th best marketing guy in the country, I don't think you'd be on it, okay? Uh, I happen to think that I am reasonably unique with all the stuff that we do. And so therefore, I had no qualms about showing off. Uh, if I didn't have the track records behind me, if it 
couldn't do things like you just saw with the pizza business and the lolly shop or the candy shop, uh, then I wouldn't make that claim. But, you know, I do that stuff time and time and time again with game-changing ideas for businesses. If I didn't get Jerry Seinfeld for the bank, if I didn't come up with a free holiday program and so on and so forth, I'll be giving you a few of them, uh, I wouldn't be boasting. But I can do that, so there's no, no harm. No, nobody likes a show-off. Uh, if they don't have any credibility behind them. But if you are an expert at something, then make sure you let them know. Now, if you're not the expert, but your business is, like Apple, then you should promote that your business is the expert. Simple as that. Number three, create a wow factor. And that's what I did with the Greater Building Society. Get a home loan, get a free holiday. Okay, so therefore, that's what McDonald's have done with the Happy Meal toy. And that's what you should do. You should have a wow factor to take their eyes off the price or wow factors. Emotional direct response marketing. Okay, basically, that's problem solution. So therefore, Neurofen and Panadol, they do that now. So they, build, they, they will say in the old days, oh, we've got paracetamol, we've got codeine, we've got all that sort of stuff in our tablet. You don't care. You just want your head ain't gone in 10 minutes so now what they do is that they show you a school teacher in front of a bunch of rat bag kids she takes the tablet she takes the glass of water and all of a sudden she's got blush and lipstick she looks so much more attractive the kids are well behaved it's amazing what tablets do these days and her headache's gone in 10 minutes there's a little clock on the tv screen or the uh, the facebook uh, screen okay telling you the headache's gone in 10 minutes she doesn't care what's in the damn tablet she just wants a headache gone number five create a website that sells now you know i can tell you dealing with you know hundreds of businesses that we do most businesses have got a corny website and it's corny because it doesn't sell it's either pretty or it's ugly but whichever way it doesn't have direct response components in it. And I will touch on what you need on your website, particularly the homepage, in just a little while. Okay, so hang with me because I'll go through exactly the components that you need on your homepage after testing and testing and testing countless bloody websites, by the way. You'll see exactly what you need to put on your homepage. Um, and, by the way, I, I will show you that uh, when you um, sort of hang around us, we have website companies that put websites together in a two or three week period, not five or six or seven months to get a wireframe, which a lot of you I know would probably be frustrated with. Events, uh, really you need to do online and offline events, in my opinion. Uh, offline events, of course, are breakfasts and they are lunches and they might be tapas dinners and, uh, you know, online events are something like this, Facebook Live, and might very well be uh, uh, podcasts, it might be webinars, okay? So therefore, uh, you should think about events. And the reason why is because you want to sell once to many. Now, I'm giving you a bucket load of good advice and good content tonight okay but will there be a pitch do you want to join me and help me fast track you on this path of course there will be i'm not as i said at the beginning of this i'm not a relative of mother Teresa's. i'm not doing this because i love you i probably will love you if you end up coming onto one of our programs but at the moment i don't love you okay so the whole idea is that it's sell once to many and you can do that if you hold a seminar with 50 or 60 or 100 people in and anthony robbins does that with six or seven or ten thousand people in the room uh, he only has to get a 10% close rate and he's a very wealthy man after each one of those things. Or you can do it like this on Facebook Live. And uh, I will be touching on Facebook Live toward the latter part of this because you should be doing this. You should be doing this, okay? I'm not saying webinars are still not uh, pos well, things that you should think about, but this is easier and I'll tell you why it's even more profitable. So hang around for that. Uh, the seventh thing is uh, video testimonials. Uh, the point is, is that you, uh, I think at the moment we've got a hundred and, yeah, 133 people on. Good audience. Well done. Okay. Um, so, th th and by the way, just so you understand this, we would have 133 people on at the moment, um, but the way Facebook Live works is that if uh, Facebook's algorithm sees that this is engaging, that you people hang with me uh, and you might ask a few questions and then you might share it. And by the way, if you do have some friends in business, please share it, okay? Share it and get it out there. Um, you'd be doing yourself a favour because you're doing them a favour and you'd be doing me a favour too because the point is, is that Facebook's algorithm kicks in and says, oh, hang on, this guy's got a lot of engagement. He's got a lot of people hanging in there for his, um, uh, for his five-hour Facebook. I'm joking. It's not five hours, okay? Um, uh, a lot of people hang in there for this and uh, so they've got a lot of comments, a lot of shares, a lot of emojis and little hearts and all sorts of things and guess what? They then think that because this has been engaging, that's their favourite word, they will spread this to more people around Australia and around the world and so therefore there's every chance in the world that whilst I might have a hundred and something on at the moment, 
uh, three days' time and four days' time, that might have gone, particularly when we repost it, that might have gone to uh, 1,000 people, to 2,000 people, to 3,000 people. So that's why you have to consider Facebook Live over webinars, and we'll touch on more of that towards uh, the latter part of this. Anyway, video testimonials, I'll come back to that. You know what? You do not want video testimonials from Esme, Beryl, or Daphne because they're going to go, hello, my name's Esme. And you know, the Fred, who just mowed my lawn, is lovely. He's got a wonderful whippersnapper. That is not going to sell his lawn mowing services, okay? What you want is uh, her to say what life was like before Bill mowed her lawn and then what life is like now. So she would say, hello, my name's Esme. Uh, my lawn was you know, in disrepair. Uh, the, the garden was awful. And then Fred's landscaping service came along, and it's just gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. He now makes sure that with his whippersnipper, he does the edges, and he does all around the house. And, oh, I need that. Talk about a wow factor bonus. Before he left, he actually uh, you know, cleaned my windows or washed my car or cleaned the pool in a pair of short bloody swimmers. And Bill is now the father of three of my children or whatever it is. Okay, so therefore the fact is that you want to know how to get good testimonials. And uh, uh, look, in this you know form, formula that we have, a 12-point formula, obviously you won't expect me to do anything else but flog my stuff, but we have the scripts for you to use so that you get the right testimonials. Uh, number eight, free publicity. It's all about making sure that you know how to send out media releases. And if you know what to put in the media release, then you'll know, uh, well, you'll get free publicity, both offline and offline. Uh, sorry, online and offline. Very, very straightforward and easy to get publicity these days in the offline publications. Why? Well, because the fact of the matter is, is that they're struggling. Newspapers know that, you know, it's not what it used to be. So there's every likelihood if you know how to structure a media release, they're going to give you publicity. Number nine, delivering uh, Disney-style customer service. I call it extraordinary customer service, and uh, that is important. Uh, if you want to beat Amazon, uh, then you have to do what they can't do, and that is extraordinary customer service. You can do that. They aren't quite set up to do that except deliver quickly. Number 10, build repetitive trade. You can only build repetitive trade, of course, if you collect data. So it's all about you know, collecting data and creating some sort of, I guess, Lordy scheme. This is the big one, social media, okay? And I've left it to last because it is the big one. And it should be on the tip of your tongue right now. Don't use it like most people are using it, okay? Use it as a lead generation machine, which is all about making sure that you are going to provide three things. You're going to provide good content, you're going to be engaging and build rapport, and you're going to make an offer. And I'm going to show you in a moment what we call the two-step sell advertising uh, formula for uh, Facebook and for Instagram. And if you grab that and just run with it, even if you do nothing with me, just grab it and run with it. And the last but not least is a uh, marketing plan, how to put a marketing plan together, okay? And that is all about making sure that you know. Now, you know, I've just gone through 11 components of what you need to consider to put in a marketing plan, and maybe you won't. Maybe you won't put all of those 11 components into your marketing plan. I'm not saying that you have to, but you might like to put two or three or four or five or seven into them. So that's why I went through the whole 12. Let me just have a squeeze here. I'll put my specs on and see what we got here. Some, uh, some questions. Uh, uh, Terence Mulligan says, is the data gathering that's hard? Where to uh, source the Virgin database? Uh, look, uh, it, a lot of people don't know, mate, that uh, there are list brokers. Okay, so what we have in our programs is... Um, uh, access to a lot of our suppliers or all of our suppliers whether it be graphic artists or copywriters or list brokers and there's a bunch of list brokers in Australia and overseas whereby you can rent the list so if you wanted accountants in Sydney for example or Western Sydney they will give you the contact details for accountants in Western Sydney if you wanted to get the you know the uh, database of all of the people uh, I'm afraid my Give me one second. I think my uh, yeah, it's all gone. Uh, uh, okay, so <laughs> terrific. I've got a uh, I've got a uh, tablet here. That's just the batteries died. So we'll see if we can get someone to fix that for me. Uh, yeah. So therefore, you can get a list. You can actually rent a list for virtually anything you want. So if you wanted, for example, uh, people who have responded to a I don't know an ab swing commercial on TV then that list will be available for you. And normally what you do is that you ask the list broker uh, to give you either the offline list or the online list. Uh, and generally speaking, it's around about $300 a thousand. Now, offline data is going to be uh, probably more valuable for you because it's going to give the, uh, the, the, the position in the business, managing director, it's going to give you the address and it's going to give you their phone number. The online stuff, uh, if you get some Gmail addresses or Hotmails, you know as well as I do, that's not as you know, valuable as you might like it to be. Uh, let me see uh, what else we got here. I'll just scroll through and see if we've got some nice questions. Uh, but -ba -dum. Okay, uh, but uh, I still, it doesn't look like you censored me. What if uh, I have an entire business, Karen Phillips says, without any shop front? Website is great, just need to know uh, how to. Let me just press Seymour, attract buyers. Okay, Karen, so therefore, uh, this is broken again. Uh, so 
<laughs> I have not got a good tablet. Um, so therefore, the thing is, is that in terms of uh, in terms of an online business, then yeah, you have to go hard on making sure that you've got the most spectacular homepage. Uh, because look, if I asked you in the old days what was the most important thing of a magazine, you'd tell me it was the front cover. It was the front cover of the magazine. Um, well, of course, the most important page of your website is the front cover. It's the homepage. And so if you're going to put emphasis on anything, it needs to be on your homepage. And I'll be going through the components of what you need to have on your homepage in just a while. So hang in there with me and I'll tell you exactly what you need to have on your homepage to make it more compelling. So Karen, in your instance, if it's a totally online business, you need to have on your homepage a data capture facility. Now, whether that's a free report, which of course, you know, a lot of people do, uh, or whether it's an entry into a contest to win something, the whole idea is for you to have a data capture facility. So therefore, you know who's come to your dinner party. See, the crazy thing is, do you know that the grand final of the big football codes in Australia last year, there was 100,000 people that went to the Melbourne AFL grand final and the football code doesn't know who came. The ticketing agency does, but not the code. And in all sporting codes, you'll probably find it's the same, whereby the code has no clue who came to their match. The ticketing agency does. Okay, so let me move on. Uh, I wanted to play for you now what your marketing plan should look like. Now, this is just two minutes, and I'm going to play this to you because a lot of people say to me, well, what should be in a marketing plan, okay? And I go, well, you know, the thing is, is that in a marketing plan, you need to consider doing perhaps um, uh, four, five, seven, or eight of the 11 components that I gave you a moment ago. You don't need to have everything in there, but you need to have, first of all, broken up into online and offline if you are a business that delves in both, both of those areas. And you also need to make sure that, you know, you consider wow factor. Uh, first and foremost, you need to determine who is your most profitable target audience so that you can look for more people who look like them. Uh, I, I've had a message on one of the... Uh, <laughs> One of the messages there, could I slow down? I'm sorry, I'm a machine gun, okay? You just have to um, listen faster, okay? <laughs> I'm trying to get as much in for you because I know it's dinner time. I know you're sitting there with your McDonald's hamburger uh, or your baked dinner uh, or your Asian fusion dinner, whatever it is, with a glass of wine. Uh, and, or maybe if I tell the truth, I'm probably talking fast to get through it so I can do exactly the same thing. Uh, I'm a bit cheeky, of course. I invited you to come and have dinner with me tonight, uh, but it was BYO. Bring, bring your own dinner. Uh, okay, let me, uh, I'll slow up uh, and I might have a swig. Do you notice that you can't have, if you want to be cool and groovy, and of course I want to be, you just can't buy the, uh, what is it, Mount Franklin bottles anymore. You've got to have one of these things. My Gen Y kids have told me, no, Dad, you've got to have one of these things. And not only does it look cool, at least I think it looks cool, but it keeps it cold. It, it, yeah. Anyway, that's a useless piece of information, but it was a segue on to now uh, playing this little two-minute tape. And this is what we do when we put together a marketing plan for a business. Uh, and I think when you watch this, uh, if you have put together what you think is a marketing plan, you'll be probably thinking, uh, gosh, I think we should have dug a little bit deeper. Here we go. So here's the format of my WOW marketing action plans. You'll see this one happens to be for a, uh, a visual, audio visual events company. Uh, broken up into three sections, my marketing plans. There's the overview, then there is the website. So I go through what the website design should look like. And then there's the overall marketing suggestions, okay, which is a smorgasbord of ideas. Let me just take you uh, through a typical one. Happens to be an overview for this particular, you know, events AV company. Uh, I go through all the sorts of details that I've gained from their questionnaire, uh, their major competitors, uh, what they're doing to upsell to current clients, um, who their major competitors are. You'll see it's all listed here. I go through and I ask them in the questionnaire, are they positioning themselves as the expert? And if they're not, then of course I'll know further down into the report how I can help them position themselves in that area. Uh, in this instance here, we then get through to the website. I give an overview of what I think their website um, is looking like at the moment, uh, whether I give them a, a couple of ticks of approval or whether I give them a hard time. Normally it's a hard time, <laughs> okay? Then I give them the recommenda recommendations for the website and I go through what I think they should be having in the homepage and they should have a benefit-driven headline. In their instance, Australia's number one audiovisual experts for events and functions. Sit back, relax, and let's, let us look after all the technical, theatrical issues for you. In other words, we take it over for you. We're a one-stop shop. Then I explain to them what they might need in an explanatory video. I then go through what the video should look like and contacts of companies where they can get the video done. Uh, I talk to them about a free report and why they need that in there. I talk about the Macca's menu board and so on and so forth. I, uh, I basically go through what they should have. Then I go through their sub pages and I tell them what they should have on their services page, uh, their showcase page, the Why Choose Us page and so forth. Then I give them a Basically, my contact details of website companies, if they wanted to get the website done from people in our supplier list, I talked to them about the free report, not to get too frightened with it, just how you can simply put together a two 
or three page free report and then I give them a layout of what their home page should look like so therefore here you'll see is I've given them a layout I give them what they should have above the uh, the menu bar what their positioning statement should be what they should have in their welcome video and so on and so forth so the full layout of their website there and then I go through the marketing plan and show them again what they should do I just reiterate because it's obviously a big part of their marketing what they should do with their website go through Facebook advertising show them what a Facebook ad should look like uh, give them the copy that they should be using uh, remarketing telling them how I use remarketing and why they should use it for their business search engine optimization Google AdWords we do a uh, Google AdWords I'm oh, sorry we do a Google keyword search uh, for the business to see what sort of phrases are being searched uh, in whatever cities they're in uh, and then email marketing I show them exactly what they should be doing with email marketing if they happen to have a list we talk about video books and how they might like to use that this particular company is a b2b so therefore using video books like this could be a real bonus to get through the gatekeeper it's always difficult to get through the gatekeeper and this is a great way of doing it uh, we talk about SMS marketing and I give them an example in this instance it's an AV company if you have an event or function coming up and you want the best audio visual equipment supplier in Australia talk to us now special April offer where you get a free XYZ click here for me more details then I show them how that SMS marketing sends people through to a landing web page and then of course you can do the sell I show them direct mail campaigns uh, in this instance this particular company has a number of different uh, uh, prospects and so therefore I put together some brochures uh, layouts and show them exactly how they should actually put together a four-page brochure you'll see here's a four-page brochure uh, then we go through events and ironically this particular company is a an event management company of sorts because they're an AV company and audio visual so I show them how they should be holding events inviting their prospects to dinner and uh, selling to them in other words do what I do and I show them some examples of other companies that have done that uh, I show them how the invitation might look so we give a bit of a rough uh, idea or well, more than a rough idea a pretty clear idea of what the invitation should look like and then the conclusion and then at the end of it they get all of my suppliers so therefore all of the people that they need to deal with whether it be website design or video production go, or go, Facebook go, advertising go, go. okay okay so therefore you'll see the uh, marketing plan there was uh, one that's pretty comprehensive and hopefully you're sitting there going Phew. Boy, oh boy, that's got some content. Um, if uh, yeah, blatant pitch here, by the way. <laughs> if uh, if you're a business that uh, is doing a reasonable turnover, as in maybe four or five hundred thousand or more, then you might like uh, to uh, consider our private coaching program. So therefore, uh, this is not really uh, what this presentation is all about. I'm going to uh, show you in a short while not only the Facebook Avalanche Leads Formula, uh, but also uh, show you how you can you know for a very moderate price uh, get involved with us so that we can help you with your marketing and uh, and with your avalanche leads um, but we have two programs we have one program which is a very modest investment which uh, you'll see in a moment uh, and then we have our private consult program okay so therefore the private uh, clients the likes of what you saw uh, with the candy shop guy uh, and uh, and with the pizza company uh, they actually get me to be their quasi marketing manager so I actually just become their marketing manager and also I bring with me an implementation coach because I know that uh, at sometimes you know businesses do get a little bit overawed where I'll put together a plan like that and then they go oh gosh well, we've got to implement it and so therefore these days with our private coaching program what we do is we have an implementation coach that comes with it now these people are paying about three thousand dollars a month that's two thousand nine hundred and something as usual but let's just say round figures about three thousand dollars a month and if you multiply that by 12 to have me as your quasi marketing manager yeah sure thirty six thousand dollars a year I know that's real money uh, but if you're doing four or five hundred thousand dollars with a turnover or maybe a million or whatever it may be uh, it should be seen as a pretty reasonable investment almost petty cash do you know I checked the other day that the average wage for a PA in Australia that's a, you know in the old days we'd call that person a secretary but a personal assistant is 54,000 54,000 is the average salary for a PA in Australia these days I don't know what it is in America or somewhere else but yeah 54,000 so to get me to be your quasi marketing manager with uh, quite a few decades of experience and uh, all of the systems that we have for three grand a month I think is pretty good if you're interested in that uh, you can have a call with me just type in comments below uh, private that's all you have to do private not privates okay private and we'll organize tomorrow to contact you and then you know, schedule a call with me so that's obviously if you're a business doing four or five hundred K or more I understand if you're doing less than that that might be a bit of a tough stretch to be paying a few thousand dollars a month by the way what you get with that is what you just saw okay that marketing plan uh, we have a, uh, a, a, a questionnaire that we give you you fill that out then I have a, a, a basically an interaction with you uh, on a zoom call and then I put that marketing plan together for you within 10 working days 
try getting that from an advertising agency, okay, within 10 working days. They might give you one idea in a month or two. So if you're interested in that, and then basically you're on a 12-month coaching program whereby, you know, you can contact me at any time. You've got limitless contact to me, and uh, it's like having me next door. Uh, you can contact me whenever you want, and uh, basically what we do is help you grow the business. So if you're interested in that, just type in private below and we'll organise a call with you soon. By the way, I want to show this to you. In that uh, marketing plan that you saw us show off about, uh, you might have seen that we had a video book in there. Have a look at this, okay? Uh, when you open up this video book, a video plays automatically. I John Delay is my name and uh, I'm the owner of okay. the and it's called a video book. And despite the fact that we live in the digital age that we do, if you want to get past the gatekeeper and you're in the B2B business, have a think about this. Now, you know, I don't have any sort of sole rights to this. You can just look up Google, uh, any Chinese company that does video cards or video books. We happen to have gone through a hell of a lot of them to find the one now that we're very happy with, uh, both production and price-wise. Um, but if I'm sending out a mail campaign to promote my services, I'll tell you what, the PA cannot throw this one out. Uh, I'll let you hear some... Hi, John Delay is okay. my name, and uh, I'm the owner of the Institute. Okay, so that's how it works. It's called video books, and uh, just knock out. Okay, I don't make any money out of this, so I just thought I'd mention it is a great idea uh, if you want to get past the gatekeeper if you're sending something out old world style direct mail okay okay now let me tell you some more stuff uh, this is it social media two-step sell and if you are not having a great success with facebook and instagram and all of those things at the moment then you might like to stick around because what we're going to do is uh, give you my mantra okay so social media advertising in my mind uh, should send every single prospect to a landing page which has an offer with a time limitation or quantity limitation. I thought I'd give you an example of some of these game changes that we've put together for other businesses. I'm going too fast again, aren't I? <laughs> I, can tell, I can tell myself uh, that I'm going too fast. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll slow down. I'll slow down. I'll try not to be a machine gun. Okay, so therefore, let's give you this example of a transformation. This happens to be a fencing company. We've changed the name to Protect the Innocent, all right? But you'll see on here that the fencing company, this was their old Facebook ad. And uh, let's have a look at the copy, okay? Thompson Fencing, not their real name, but anyway, has been established for over 22 years and we've completed over 14,000 aluminium fence installations. We cater for homeowners, strata plans, builders. We provide measuring pre-treatment, powder coating, blah, blah. And then down underneath the picture of that stunning aluminium fence, which is a real turn on, uh, they just basically give you some more boring information. So what have they done? Uh, they have, and I'll leave it on the screen so as I, I, I actually critique this for you. They've shown you all the features. We're not interested in the features. We're interested in the benefits. Now, they were putting this Facebook ad and letterbox brochures out to older suburbs. The great thing with Facebook is that, you know, you can... Uh, sort of target either lookalike audiences or geodemographic profiling audiences. In this instance, the fencing company that's making an aluminium fence obviously wants to target older homes with the paling fences that are falling down. Just makes sense, doesn't it? A brand new home is not going to want an aluminium fence. They've already got one. And so therefore, they put this ad out and spent a gazillion dollars on telling you all about the features. They put a like a boring photo. Of the, I don't think anyone's going to look at that photo. Oh my goodness, look at that aluminium fence. It is not Elle McPherson, okay? It's not a sports car. It's an aluminium fence. Or if you're watching this in America, an aluminum fence. And so therefore, it miserably and when the owner came onto our program he said look can you help me please can you help me I said of course we can so therefore this is what we did uh, we asked him would he like to just move out of the way for a little while and what we would do is we'd still geodemographically target the older suburbs in this particular area of Australia and we brought out this campaign it is the ugliest back fence in Australia contest and it is a great example of my two-step cell philosophy so what we do is we target all the people with crappy falling down back fences and we said take a photo of your ugly back fence and post it to our Facebook page for your chance to win a brand new aluminium fence uh, makeover worth $5,000 which of course cost him next to nothing and uh, then we decided to split test it by putting another ad together and this is it uh, basically the same sort of thing you'll see there that we're saying do you have a really ugly back fence do you see what we're doing we're selling the benefits we're not selling the features so enter the ugliest back fence in australia contest win the new fence who do you think is going to enter that of course people who we are targeting with a back fence that's falling over and they want a new one and if they want a new one and they don't win the contest and 99 percent of people won't win the contest and of course they are absolutely prime target for a phone call or for an email or for a text message saying, you know what, you didn't win, but we've got this special deal. And there you see the, uh, give me a second, uh, that's what the Facebook page looked like. They basically put their hands up and they glowed in the dark. They glowed in the dark. Now I'll bring the camera back to me. 
because I want to tell you that uh, the uh, promotion of the campaign on Facebook, uh, they spent, uh, I think it was about 500 and something dollars, okay, uh, over three days. Wait for it. I'm going to bring a slide up. Drum roll. They got two years worth of leads in just three days. Two years worth of leads in three days. And I think it was 514 or $520 that they spent. And the owner rang me up and said, JD, turn the damn thing off. We can't handle any more leads. How would you like that problem? Turn the Facebook campaign off. We can't handle any more leads. We got everyone with a shitty back fence to glow in the dark, to put their hand up and go, we want a new aluminium fence. Because if they want to win one, then it's telling you they've got an ugly one. In fact, forget telling you, they actually took a photo of the ugly one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you the same two-step mentality. Now, why two-step? The first step is to give them a lure and incentive to go to a landing page to get that free report or to enter that contest or whatever it may be. And then, of course, they've got to give you their contact details for that. And when they do that, then, of course, guess what? The second step is to sell. That's why it's called a two-step sell. First step is to get their contact details. Second step is then to follow up and sell. Now, when you're running a contest like that, make sure you only run it for a week or so before you launch the new one, because obviously you want to get to the people who have entered the contest pretty quickly after you've had the draw. So it wouldn't be a contest that you run for three months. I'll give you another example. This one on the screen at the moment, Kitchen Company, exactly the same sort of target audience, ironically. Um, and you know, they're looking for older homes that have got a kitchen that's 20 years old or 30 years old. So what we did is we said, look, we're coming up with a brand new kitchen uh, design or a couple of designs. We want to know which one would probably be the more popular okay so can you vote for either one of those two kitchen designs and you're in the chance to win a kitchen makeover a or b and so what happens is that when they actually clicked on that ad they went through to the landing page and the landing page gave them the same photographs which one do you like and you probably can't see it particularly if you're watching on a phone at the moment but the last question after we get their name and contact details is how old is your current kitchen so if they actually put in their 30 years, they're going to get a phone call from us quicker than if they put in 15 years for obvious reasons. Uh, result of that was they got uh, six months worth of leads in one week. And again, we had to turn the campaign off. Now, the beauty of this is not just the avalanche of leads because of the formula. The beauty of this is that they've got a predicted model now that they can just turn on when they want. So just turn the damn thing back on whenever you want more leads. That's the benefit of coming up with a formula that, has a pretty good track record. Let me show you one more, uh, and this happens to be a water filtration company. So completely different from the other two. And this is the old ad that they used to run. I'm giving you before and afters here, or what I affectionately call shit to gold. Um, this water filters company essentially decided that they would bore you to death by telling you underneath the picture, the gorgeous picture of what goes under your sink. <laughs> Again, it's the features, not the benefits, okay? Let me say this to you. Let me just say this to you, okay? If features really sold versus benefits, then Jenny Craig would be putting all her Facebook and Instagram ads out there showing a bowl of rice. Okay, she doesn't do that. Jenny Craig shows you the before and after lady who might be a little bit overweight and then she goes on the program and she looks like, you know, Miranda Kerr, supermodel. Uh, she doesn't show a bowl of rice. Okay, so it's not about the features, it's about the benefits. Let me bring you back to the water filtration system and uh, you'll see here that the copy under, I've got to read it to you, I've just got to read this, it's classic and the guy who owns this business had a good laugh with me. Uh, it's a GTI 26 hyphen 5 reverse osmosis water filtered stage 5 under sink alkaline filter. If you're concerned about the quality of water that's coming from your taps then book a free home water assessment consultation and we'll arrange blah blah blah. Uh, that is like business speak, it is not normal speak okay so therefore Betty Bankstown is not going to understand that so what we did we said look do you want to sort of move out of the way and we'll go into our two-step cell formula and of course he said yes so this is what we did I'll bring it up on your screen right now uh, you'll see there that uh, sorry I'm a little bit late but we'll see there uh, is that uh, we've shown a lady with uh, yeah some dirty water coming out of the tap and a real fact that 90 something percent of Sydney homes tap water contains wait for it herbicides lead pesticides mercury wait for it and arsenic <laughs> okay, and you'll see the copy above the ad is long form copy. And the reason we go for long form copy is because you just don't want a click, you want a warm click. Okay, so even in those contests, what we do is we make sure we have long form copy in there and that we really have zeroed in on our lookalike audience so that we just don't get clicks, we get warm clicks. Well, of course, they're warm clicks when they show you a photo of their crappy fence or their crappy kitchen, uh, or you know, they vote for a kitchen because they're in an older suburb. So we want warm leads for you, not just leads, because pay per click advertising, you don't want to pay for crappy leads. So in this instance, you'll see long form. Okay, shocking statistic a Macquarie University study has found that Sydney families are being exposed to high levels of copper 
copper, lead, contamination. Parents are justifiably concerned. You'll see where I've gone with this copy. Uh, given the contaminated tap water is used for coffee, wait for it, baby formula and meal preparation. So we're really gone for the jugular. Right? And then at the bottom of that uh, graphic, we say answer these five survey questions about tap water and be in the draw to win this water filtration system for your home. So what we've done is that we've scared the prospect uh, into thinking, gosh, my goodness, you know, the water, I'm making baby formula with this. Well, this is like, I've got to stop this. I want to win one of those. And if they put the hand up to win one of those by answering a number of survey questions, then of course they are prime prospects for getting an in-home demonstration. So let me show you what the uh, landing page looks like. So when they go to the landing page, obviously you can see happy people. And we've got a few questions there that we just asked them to pre-qualify them. And then they put their details in. Let me tell you what happened there. This happens to be an email that we received from the owner of the business. You'll see here, JD, bloody legend. I love hearing that. Uh, just over 24 hours after launching our campaign, we received 19 leads to win our water filter. It's an outstanding result. Can't believe how fast this works. Uh, I could show you more emails from him, but I won't, uh, where the numbers went up and up and up, and the numbers are a little confidential, so I won't play, I won't show them to you, but it, we're talking like stunning, absolutely stunning uh, response. And every one of these people who are entering the contest to win the water filtration system are putting their hand up going, I want a water filtration system. So therefore, he would follow them up and say, well, if they didn't win, look, you didn't win, but would you like an in-home demonstration? Simple, easy peasy when you know how. Okay, so therefore, let me just take you through a, a bit of a story here very quickly. If you're in the services game, which I'm in, and that is I'm providing marketing advisory services all the time. Uh, by the way, um, could you do me a favour just to burst my ego? If you're finding this information is uh, good, can you just type in good? good or gold or something like that in the comments box below and uh, because being in advertising uh, and therefore copying the terminology wanker uh, quite a bit then uh, of course I would like to build my ego so if you're finding that this is good just type in good would you so at least I've got some feedback um, please don't type in anything bad I, I'm, I'm very sensitive okay uh, right so look if you're in the uh, if you're in the uh, advisory business which I'm in then there's a good chance uh, that you uh, I've got a colleague of mine here at the moment laughing so I haven't looked at my phone for the last little while so there's probably some sarcastic comments in there if it's one thing I can't stand of course is sarcasm <laughs> Oh, what a hypocrite. Okay, so therefore, uh, one of the things that uh, would happen if you're in the advisory business, you get asked the same question over and over and over again. And I get that too, okay? And yes, you do feel sometimes like, oh, dickhead, please don't ask me that again. How many times have I told you that? Uh, and so I decided to put together a library. And this library answers any question that anyone could ever possibly have about direct response marketing. And I've called this, I'll bring it up on the screen right now, I've called this uh, Wow Central. And so this WOW Central uh, is, I know, because I've checked it out, I've had other people investigate it for me. It took us about two years to put this website together. It is the largest marketing ideas library on the planet. This thing is up there with Google in terms of the number of pages that we have on there. And I thought I'd play it to you. It's a, just another one of these little two-minuteers. Uh, and the reason I'm playing it to you is because I'm going to show you how to get your hands on this uh, for like a like a minuscule investment and what this is is that if you want to you can get on there and just search by your industry for all the ideas that I've had over the years uh, and you just pinch them okay you've got all these templates on there for Facebook ads and for Instagram ads and for brochures and for radio commercials and for letterbox drops and for direct mail you name it everything on there for like just about every industry A to Z okay I can't guarantee if you clip toenails that there's stuff on there for you but pretty much likely everything else there will be. So you can search by industry or you can search by advertising type. So you can say, oh, JD, I want to learn more about brochures. And up will come a philosophy on video like this on how to put together compelling brochures or how to put together compelling Facebook ads like you've just seen, okay? I'm going to play it. It goes for two minutes. Hang in there. If you've got the kettle on to make a cup of tea, then, yep, just hang in there and watch this. It's two minutes long and it will show you what Wow Central is all about because I'm going to show you how you can get your hands on this. we have this gigantic swipe file called Wow Central. And it is the world's largest online marketing ideas bank, okay? And it's all about showing you how to drive traffic to your website. You see how this all adds up? It is peaches and cream. And in this particular Wow Central, it doesn't matter what business you are. I've just written a few business types down here, okay? So I can run through them. You can be an accountant. You can be a childcare center. You can be a hotel, mechanics, cleaner. You can be a restaurant. You can be a beauty parlor. You can be a spa, real estate. Uh, you can be an online specialist. You can be in retail or travel or medical or fitness or your hair, a butcher, hair salon. I could go on and on and on. It doesn't matter what business you are. There's a pretty good chance 
sense that we're going to be able to cater for you in this WOW Central because what I've done is that I've taken all of the concepts and ideas that I've created throughout the years in my marketing consultancy and I've put them into this magnificent, like I know I'm talking it up, but it is. It's crazy. It's taken us two years to build this site, by the way. Okay, It's a massive website um, and you won't find anything like it anywhere in the world. This is a swipe file from heaven. And access for you for brochures, for Facebook ads, uh, for website designs, for marketing plans. You'll be able to just swipe full on 20, 30 page marketing plans. Now, we've taken out the confidential information of private clients of mine who I've put the marketing plans together for, but you've got the essence, the template of the marketing plan. So it doesn't matter. Let me just, you know, again, go through some industries. It doesn't matter whether you're an accountant, whether you're in the spa business or whether you're a mechanic or whether you're a cleaner or you own a restaurant or you've got an online consultancy business or you're in retail or travel or fitness or landscaping or whatever it may be. Um, pretty strong chance that there is a 20 to 30 page full on marketing plan within WOW Central that you're just going to be able to swipe, put your name on all of the, uh, if you like, recommendations that I've given you there, online and offline, and run with it. It is insane. It's like having me sitting next to you, next door, and just providing you with ideas whenever you want them. So this is a massive swipe file. Wow Central is a massive swipe file for you just to get in and take whatever you want. You can also search in the website, by the way, by advertising category. So if you just wanted to learn more about how to do Facebook ads, you just wanted to learn more about how to put together letterbox brochures, you just wanted to learn more about how to get free publicity and send out media releases and get free public. that's all in there too. So you can search in Wow Central by advertising category, and you can also search by your industry. Now, most people who come on board search by industry. Okay, so that's Wow Central. It is a, an incredibly uh, valuable resource. Okay, so there you have it, uh, Wow Central. We think it's pretty special, but of course we're biased. Uh, and I'll tell you how you get your hands on that in just a moment. Uh, by the way, <clears throat> if you are doing Facebook Lives and webinars, but particularly Facebook Lives where there's instant reaction, like you can see on the comment box below, you're going to get your odd sledge, okay? And uh, that's going to happen. But don't let that stop you from doing it, all right? I mean, there are people that perhaps I don't like either. Uh, and so therefore, if there's people on this and they don't like me, okay, fine. Um, uh, fortunately, I have no feelings, so it doesn't matter. Bing, it just bounces off. So uh, if you are going to do this and you think, oh, I'm, I might be criticised, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. The, the point is, is that there will be a good percentage of people, hopefully, that like what you're doing and they see a lot of advantage and a lot of great value. They're the people you listen to. You don't listen to the, uh, what do they call them when people are sledging? Is it trolls or something like that? Yeah, anyway, whatever. Um, look, what I wanted to do is uh, get into... Um, uh, get into websites. I want to show you uh, just basically what you want to do if you're actually going to have a website that sells. So therefore, uh, bringing up on your screen right now uh, the drum roll of uh, creating a website that sells, which is part of that 12-step program I was telling you to put together a marketing plan. And you want to turn your website into a 24-7 sales machine. And I've got to say to you, with all the businesses that I yeah, that I look after and that I've come across over the years, uh, then I'd say 80% of them have a pretty awful website. Uh, and so therefore, I'm going to show you how to fix it, okay, and how to actually, and this doesn't mean to say that you have to join my program or what have you to fix it, just steal the ideas I'm going to give you if you don't want to you know, hang around me. Um, you don't want a website, you want one that uh, is a direct response website, and you do not want this guy to be designing it for you. He is a bearded hipster, and he is evil, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Please do not type in the comment box, uh, he's not evil, he's not evil. I'm joking, all right? But you will find that when you go to a bearded hipster uh, to uh, get your website put together, it may take four, five, six months to get a wireframe, and you might end up with a very pretty website, but one that's still not selling. So let me just show you the components of a website that I believe you need to have if you want it to sell. Now, this is the homepage components, and this is a very quick rough sketch. Don't judge me on the quality of the sketches, just to give you a quick idea. Happens to be a you know school, uh, sorry, a child mining center uh, in Sydney, cheeky monkeys. So the problem is, do you need before or after skill care for your child, okay? Just come up with a problem solution headline or a benefit driven headline, but let's stick with problem solution, okay? So we problem, do you need somewhere to put your children during the day when you're at work? Well, we got the solution. Then you have a welcome video. Uh, very important this day and age because the engagement value of videos versus text, and so therefore you should have a welcome video. Now that could be depending upon your brand, from you as the owner, uh, if you enjoy being in front of the camera and you're pretty passionate about what you do, that's great. Or it could just be a voiceover with carousel images. 
or it could be a doodle animation video, one of those things, okay? It's up to you. Then you have a free report to capture data because you want to find out who's coming onto your website. And then what you want to do is have video testimonials from happy parents saying, we dropped little Tommy off in the morning. And guess what? He was still there at five in the afternoon. That's a first. Uh, and then what you might like to do is actually have a Macca's menu board of all the sorts of things that you have in your business. And then, of course, a call to action. Let me show you how this works in real life. This happens to be a client who came on board who has an orange citrus farm. And what they basically did is had this homepage. Uh, does that really give you the country practice storytelling flavor for an orange citrus? <laughs> no, it doesn't, okay? And so therefore we said, do you want us to take over? And they said, yes, please. So therefore I sketched up what I thought should be the front page and take advantage of the fact that it's in a beautiful 50 acre citrus farm in Victoria and that you get 100% fresh orange germ straight from the farm. Look, do you get the feeling when you look at that, that this is straight from the farm? I don't think anyone's going to look at that and go, oh, orange juice in a plastic bottle, that's new. So therefore, what we're doing is taking a lame, you know, basically information-focused website there that would, you know, was not performing and put it together like this. You'll see there that then I talk about the benefits. It's no added sugar and no concentrates, no artificial colouring. You'll see that the actual plastic bottles get very little real estate because who cares? Then... That's given to my uh, website designer that we have. We have a number of them. And my layout is turned into that. And you can see that is very much the TV show Country Practice. It's selling the fact that it comes direct from the farm. Uh, it basically has a data you know, capture facility in it where they can win a year's worth of orange juice and all that sort of stuff. Have a look at the before and after. Absolutely no contest. And I can't divulge the difference in sales but let me say to you it starts with e and that is extraordinary okay extraordinary it's all about your home page being direct response design i've got to show you this one it happens to be a a, a tourist attraction it's in uh, lightning ridge uh, in queensland and basically they had seniors coming through and going through uh yeah underground i couldn't do it i'm a little bit claustrophobic was it claustrophobic and they put the heart out on and a little torch and they go through underground and they would you know basically uh yeah, mostly be gray nomads who were in their caravans and they'd go through lightning ridge and that's what they did and so therefore i said to the owner of this business what's the problem he said well, we're not getting enough people and i said okay well show me what your signage looks like outside the attraction <laughs> Look, he's become a good mate now. The owner of this business name is Greg and he's a good pal. Uh, so he takes it all in good spirit. And I said to him, OMG, you've got to be joking. And he said, what? And I said, that sign. Uh, what's that all about? He goes, oh, it's better than the ones next to me. I saw it just marginally. Anyway, I said to him, well, if that's your sign. Can I have a look at the homepage of your website? He goes, oh, I don't think I want to show that to you after you've just bagged out my signage. I said, please show it to me. And here it is. I said to him, what do you call your tourist attraction? Uh, and he said, uh, he said, walk in mine. I said, well, no, that's what it is. But what do you call it? He goes, walk in mine. Oh, dear. So uh, I want to show you how you can get a website put together in around about 60 seconds if you know the right people. I know that's a big claim, but so was my 812,000 phone calls and I showed you how that came about. This is it, okay? I'll show you exactly what we did and uh, I'll, let, I'll just play the tape. You'll see how a website can be put, at least a homepage can be put together in about 60 seconds. The webpage for the Lost Treasure Opal Mine Adventure. What I normally do is sketch out the layout in pencil and then I put the black pen to it, as you can see here. Now we've ripped a piece out of a treasure map and put the big heading, Lightning Ridges Leading Attraction, the Lost Treasure Opal Mine Adventure. Then of course there's the introductory video. Second panel is all about the chance to win $50,000 because not only will you enjoy yourself going through this adventure, you could walk away with $50,000. Then the next panel is all about what the adventure is all about. So therefore we go through and one, two, three, four panels and explain to them exactly what they're going to experience when they come into this adventure. So it's not a secret. Then we have adventurers giving us their video testimonials, telling you just how great it is. And the final panel would probably be uh, just highlighting further why it's an attraction for all ages and for the whole family. So once again, you can see it's got all the components of the direct response mantra that I suggest. It's got the big headline, it's got the welcome video, it's got a big prize to give away, and it's got video testimonials and explains to everyone what they're going to experience in this adventure. So there you have it, okay, so that's the layout, and let me show you now what the web page looks like when we give it to our art studio, okay, that's what the layout looks like, and then this is now what the website looks like. Do you think it's got a little bit more adventure to it? Uh, and we'll scroll through that page, scroll through the page, and you'll see the before and after. What did we do? We widened the funnel. What I said to this guy is that what he had not looked at, and you may not have looked at this for your business, and that is widening the funnel. He was only looking after grey nomads, okay? He was chasing people in God's waiting room, okay? And uh, uh, I said to him, how many people do you get go through? He said, well, husband and wife, they come through. Uh, and uh, I said, good. How many come out the other end? He said, oh, normally one. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I said to him, we want families. We want to get four tickets and five tickets, so we have to give it adventure. And, of course, I'll flash back to the uh, screen again, uh, and you'll see we gave it adventure. And if you're thinking, well, what about the $50,000 prize? How did that get given away? That's what we call an insured prize. So we get that prize insured by an insurance company, and that $50,000 prize only cost him $1,100. That's probably teasing, isn't it? You're probably thinking, well, how do we get our hands on that? A $50,000. I can give you a $50,000 prize for $1,100, and I can give you a $100,000 prize for around about uh, $2,200, I think it is. Uh, they're called prize insurance. So who wants to be a millionaire? They never gave that money away. That was given away by an insurance company. And the same with deal or no deal. And you've got to know how to do these things. We've been involved in doing scratch bingo games for a thousand years for all the newspapers and all the big promotions. So therefore, I know how this works. Uh, what happens at the draw is that one person is drawn out and then they're invited to choose one of, one of 250 envelopes. And in one of those 250 envelopes is the big prize. And in the 249 other envelopes, there's a consolation prize. There's more to it than that. But he didn't have to give away the $50,000. It cost him just over $1,000. So anyway, I'll just flash back to the screen again just to show you the before and after. If that is not shit to gold, I don't know what is. Okay, so these are... Can I just sort of leave it up for a moment? Have you seen the transformations that happen? I mean, you saw the candy shop go from what it was to what it is. You saw what could happen with the pizza guys, we're home delivery. You saw what happened to the Greater Building Society, get a home loan, get a free holiday. Uh, and you saw Seinfeld. I'm not saying that I can do that every day of the week, but you saw that these are massive transformations, bang, really, really quickly. And most of these transformations come within 10 working days of these people hanging around us because we put these marketing plans together pretty quickly. Again, if you're interested in private coaching, it's a blatant plug. I'm sorry, I've got to put food on the table just like you. If you're interested in private coaching, then just type in private in the comments box below and we'll organise a call direct with me, not with one of my team. It'll be with me over the next couple of days. So if you're interested in private coaching, just put that in there, private in one of the boxes below or your box below. Okay, so this is the owner of the Opal Mine and this is what he's got to say. JD's transformed our whole business with just one idea. The transformation, as I said before, it is just amazing, the transformation, not even in the same class, and has put us in another, total another category where we've actually attracted a larger, wider range of car customers. Our audience that comes to us, our customers that come to us now is far bigger than it was before, which is what JD talks about, widening the funnel, and that's made a major difference to our business. Okay, so look, we've only got about 10 minutes to go, 10, 15 minutes to go. So if you're sitting there thinking, well, how long is he going to go for? Or hopefully you're sitting there going, oh, this is great. I hope he goes for another hour. We've <laughs> got about 10 minutes to go. Okay, so therefore, and I'll try to answer a few questions. It's a little bit hard when I'm trying to get so much content in. Um, okay, so therefore, the, uh, the thing is, is that uh, I want to show you one more uh, website transformation so you get a feel for it. Uh, up on your screen at the moment is a pool uh, company, a pool slide company, and that's what their homepage used to look like. This is what it looks like now. Big, 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 big difference, okay? And a big difference in uh, leads, of course. When you drive traffic to a page that looks like that, it's going to have a much, much bigger chance of conversion compared to what it looked like beforehand. Let me just take you back so therefore you can see what it started like. Give me a second. Uh, I'll just get it there. That's what it looked like. And that's what it looks like these days. What we do with regards to the website design is that uh, not only do we add theatre to it, as you can see there, which is very important, Disney-style theatre, but we make sure it's got the right components, okay? And one of the things that you may not have on your website, uh, I'll just bring it back to me, uh, one of the things you may not have on your website is what I've termed a Macca's menu board, okay? So if I was putting together a website for an accountancy practice and I got the website designer with the man bun or the ponytails and just pushed him away for a minute, uh, I would make sure uh, that they had a Macca's menu board of four or eight maybe uh, uh, squares or rectangles and it would be a fast track way of people choosing what service they wanted. So it might be tax minimisation, it might be BAS statements, it might be uh, wealth creation, uh, it might be uh, self-managed super and so on, the various things that they look after. So it means that when I drive traffic onto the page then yeah, you know, they can just do what we do in McDonald's. We just go, oh, we want meal number four. So they go straight to self-managed super and they press that button and go through to a sub-page that describes to them what self-managed super is all about and how they can help you and blah, blah, blah. I generally say that to most businesses because if you've got more than one product, then what you should consider is having on your homepage a Macca's menu board or what I'm just mucking around calling a Macca's menu board. Uh, look, that's about uh, it. If you are interested in doing some stuff with us and uh, taking advantage of being you know, able to access all this sort of stuff, then you might like to uh, book a call. 
Okay, we have a URL. I'm going to hold this up. This is not exactly professional. So let me hold that up. Oh, I don't know whether it's backwards. Of course, on Facebook Live, things are backwards. So let me just tell you what it is. It's book a call. Uh, sorry, book a wow call. Book a wow call dot com. Uh, and if you have any questions that you want to talk to any of us over the next few days, because you think, well, hang on, this stuff is pretty good. Um, yeah, I could use this for my business. The best email address to catch me or my crew is info at the institute of wow dot com. Okay, there's no au, so it's just info at the institute of wow.com if you've got a question you want to throw that at us then that's fine uh, or if there's something that i haven't been able to answer tonight because of circumstances uh then yeah just yeah type in and send a note to us uh, info at the institute of wow.com but what i'm about to do is to show you that if you would like to get your hands on this pretty good stuff he says very modestly. Uh, I'm going to show you how it is. We've got a program called the WOW Marketing Academy program, and I'll bring that up on your screen right now. Uh, and uh, you'll see me there in my 60 minutes pensive look. Uh, and uh, we think it's, uh, you know, pretty valuable. We think it's uh, extraordinarily valuable in terms of the price that I'm going to give you for that in just a moment. And of course, you wouldn't expect me to say anything else. I am biased. And these are the components. Let me just take you through the components. Uh, okay. Uh, number one, you get access to WOW Central. Uh, which is the biggest ideas library or marketing ideas library that we play that little video of. So therefore you've got access to all of the, uh, I guess you'd call it the JD swipe file. That's what I call it, the JD swipe file. So therefore basically you can just grab the stuff that I've done, all the templates that are in there and just swipe them. And you'll find that pretty much uh, every possible form of advertising is in there from promotional ideas to website designs to print uh, layouts to direct mail campaigns and so forth. And the big thing in there is the absolute wealth of marketing plans because the thing is, is that the marketing plan of which you saw that I put together for private clients, what happens when they leave, whether they stick around for a year or two years, when those private clients leave, we take out all of the confidential information uh, and the ID, and we then put all of those marketing plans into our central. Now, the reason I do that is because when they're paying me a few thousand dollars a month to be their private, con you know, marketing consultant, private coaching, uh, they're not paying me enough to own the copyright for all of my ideas. So therefore, everyone comes on board knowing that I will never share that marketing plan until they leave. But when they leave, I take their name out and all the confidential details, and that goes into our central. So uh, just about A to Z, any business you can probably think of, there's countless marketing plans in there that you can just swipe and use for your business. Second component of this is the 12-point uh, system that I showed you. Okay, So that's the 12-point system whereby, if you, you know, can remember, I went through the 11 points of it were basically be the expert and you know how to uh, create a wow factor, uh, how to use the problem-solution uh, formula, uh, how to make sure that your website sells, uh, how to get free publicity, uh, how to give Disney style customer service, uh, and of course the big, big, big one you'll see there on number 11, social media, how to actually turn that into a lead generation avalanche lead scheme for you. I know that this sounds very boastful and I'm probably going to cop the odd sledge. By the way, the people who put LOL and showed some emojis in there, um, thank you very much because I'm so, oh, I'm just so upset with those people who've said naughty things. But <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Okay, so therefore, uh, I try to be sincere, but I can't. I just can't. I can't be sincere. There's something wrong with me. Um, okay, so therefore, look, the thing is, is that if you want to put a marketing plan together for your business, imagine getting your hands on this. Now, just so that you know what this is all about, you actually get 12, 20 minute, around about 20 minute videos that take you through each one of those 12 steps. So therefore, there's a 20 minute video from me taking you through this formula to put together a marketing plan uh, and you actually get the text version of that as well so therefore you've got the text the text version is much 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 more comprehensive okay so therefore you get both the text and the video training in terms of putting together a marketing plan okie dokie um, okay so therefore uh, by the way again if you do want to talk to me individually about private coaching and that's probably if you're doing four or five hundred k or more then just type in private below and we'll make sure that we contact you in the morning jody from my office will contact you and organize a call so if you're interested in private coaching then just put private below okay uh the next uh aspect of this uh well marketing academy plan is uh just as i said i talked too soon i'm an idiot i'm sorry <laughs> i'm an idiot it's I don't know whether it's the drugs or I need drugs, one or the other. So therefore, you get access to all those marketing plans that I've already rabbited on about. So therefore, uh, don't uh, worry about me going through that again. Uh, webinars. And what we do is that we uh, uh, give you a webinar once every fortnight, every two weeks. Uh, if anyone's watching this in America, fortnight apparently is not really part of their vernacular. So I'm going to say twice a month. So every two weeks, you will be able to watch and put up with my sarcasm and dad jokes uh, for about 
50, 60 minutes, and that'll happen uh, our time in Australia, or Queensland time, at 8.30 every second Thursday. And uh, these webinars are very different from the ones that you would have seen before, where it's death by PowerPoint. Uh, these are me, frustrated Tonight Show host, uh, interviewing people like this guy. This guy happened to have run the Disney resorts for 10 years. He's a very, very good friend of mine. And uh, I've been a bit of a Disney freak forever because I understand just how clever these people are. And so therefore I'll have people like him on, I'll have people that it might be a website designer, it may very well be a Facebook expert, it might be a LinkedIn expert. We make these Tonight Show fashion, okay? Uh, we, we have a special little segment that I do on each webinar. Uh, I'm laughing because I know what I'm about to say, you don't, okay? I'll uh, bring the camera back to me. Uh, we have a segment which is called Don't Be a Dickhead. Uh, and uh, it sounds a bit crass, and I'm sorry if that upsets you, but uh, it's just all in fun. And what I'll do is that I'll actually have photographs or videos of stupid marketing campaigns that I've seen out in the marketplace, or some of my members have sent to me. Remember Daryl Summers with Hey Hey Saturday used to have the media watch where it was mistakes in the media? Well, mine is Don't Be a Dickhead Watch, okay? So we'll have this little segment that'll go for 10 or 15 minutes of the hour, and it will be the Don't Be a Dickhead segment, and I'll show you some silly, silly mistakes that people have made in their marketing. And it could be as simple as they've produced a brochure and they only printed it on one side when it wouldn't have cost them any more to print on both sides. It might be that they've got a silly sign outside their business or it might be a ridiculous homepage for their website. And we do it so that we get in the right mood for learning, okay? But the majority of that webinar is giving you absolute gold in terms of content offline and online marketing. Uh, we also have a teleconference. Well, these days it's a Zoom call, but let's call it a teleconference. And that happens straight after the webinar every Thursday fortnight, okay? So every two weeks we have the webinar at 8.30 in the morning Thursday. Uh, Queensland time and then we have a teleconference via Zoom straight after that so you've got access to me you can actually talk to me absolute one-on-one -on -one in this Zoom call so you just ask me anything you like and I'll give you the answers hopefully they'll be the right answers this is a big component and this is a private VIP Facebook group whereby you can ask my team any questions and they will get back to you pretty promptly. Normally it's the same day, okay? So therefore you can liaise with other members of our academy program. You can ask questions of the other members and it, that's worked out to be that way, by the way. I found, I didn't set it up this way, but I actually found that there's a lot of networking going on with people doing business with, with each other. But my team will get back and answer any question. You might you know, have a question about your shop front, just like the candy guy. You might have a question about your webinars. You might want to know how to do Facebook Live. You might want a critique on a direct mail letter that you've put together. You might decide I'm opening up a seafood restaurant. Should I paint it in warm or cool colours? Hint, cool colours, all right? And my team will be there to answer that for you. I'll be in there periodically as well, but my team will be there to do it for you so they get back as quickly as they possibly can. Uh, and then, last but not least, we actually have uh, three workshops throughout the year on the Gold Coast, okay? And they are in May, August and November. And these are huge workshops. These are two-day ideas fests whereby I bring in the best of the best, okay? So I bring in suppliers that we have in Facebook, uh, people who are experts at designing websites. I'll bring in uh, copywriters. Uh, we'll bring in people who are you know, very, very cognizant across all sorts of skill sets. We have a pretty special Rolodex list. And the Rolodex list that we have, the suppliers on there, whether they're a copywriter or they're a graphic artist or a website designer, whatever they might be, they're on there because they're three things. Good, they're fast, and they're cheap. Okay, so therefore, uh, if I could reach over to my WOW Manifesto book, I'd probably show you to give you an idea. I'm just asking for, what does John Laws call his um, support people? House maidens or something like that? I better not say that, I'd be in trouble. Uh, this book here, okay, so this is, you get the electronic version of this when you join this program. So this is the WOW Manifesto with those 12 components in it. And you'll see that when I write a book, it's a pretty big book. So therefore, this has got all that stuff that you saw before, okay, it's all in here. You get the digital version of that that comes with this program. The artist that put that together is in Australia, and if you've got this artwork done in London or probably New York or somewhere like that, you'd be paying $1,000, $1,500 for the artwork. This was done for $250, okay? Look at that, that's the front of it, and this is the back of it. So we're talking, you know, the gold tip stuff and so forth, but the artwork itself was $250. And the reason I'm showing off about that is that like this is Filipino rates from an Australian art studio, for goodness sake. So this particular artist is on our Rolodex list. He's brilliant. He's, Jerry Seinfeld, when I did the camp, did I just name drop? I did. Uh, when he did the campaign with me, I, I bet you he name drops my name when he's talking to people as well. Uh, when I was doing the three years worth of stuff with Seinfeld and flying backwards and forwards to America to do all the TV commercials, uh, I got this particular artist to do all the Seinfeld artwork. And Seinfeld asked me, who's that artist? I want his contact. Now, Jerry didn't end up doing anything with him, but it was a real, you know, feather in this artist's cap to be sort of, you know, asked about his contact details by Jerry Seinfeld. $250 for that. 
That's nuts. So therefore, when you come onto our program and you want those sorts of contacts for copywriters or for website designers, we have website uh, companies in the Philippines that will knock over an entire entire six-page website for you uh, for around about fifteen or sixteen hundred dollars. We're talking about the whole website for God's sake, okay? And designed to a direct response design. You're not going to find this stuff anywhere else. So well, at least you won't find it all in the one spot. Okay, so therefore, those three events happen in uh, May and in August and November. They're on a Friday and a Saturday. So there's one school day and then there's one weekend day. And if you can't make it to the Gold Coast, no problems. If you've got a wedding or a 21st or you just can't make it to the Gold Coast because you live in California, it doesn't matter. They are all, like you're seeing right now, Facebook Live. And so therefore, the entire Friday and the entire Saturday is all Facebook Live. Now, you won't be able to come out and have a few drink with, drinks with us on the Friday night, which we tend to do. We go out and have dinner and then we get uh, we have a few drinks. Uh, you won't be able to do that if you're watching on Facebook Live, unless we probably take the bloody you know, phone with us. But you will be able to see the entire event on the Friday and the Saturday on Facebook Live. So therefore, if you can't make it, you'll still get that as a benefit. Uh, now, it's marketing done uh, basically with you. Just follow, just join the dots. We, we, basically, if you don't have a marketing department at the moment, this is pretty valuable. It's like having me and all my resources sitting in the office next door to you. And I know you're sitting there going, okay, well, hype it up and hype it up. But what is the damage? What is the damage? Basically, it's a 12-month program. So therefore, when you join, it is a 12-month program. But if you want to find out all the details about this, because I don't want to turn this into a pitch fest, because you know, if it's not for you, it's not for you. Uh, but if you are interested, then just go to this website that's on your screen right moment. Okay, it's a web page. It's not too fancy. It's just basically asking for your name and details. And you can book a call straight away. We have a calendar on there. So you can actually just go to bookawowcall.com. Uh, I'll repeat that as if you can't see it on the screen. Idiot me. But anyway, bookawowcall.com. So if you go there uh, at any time now, tonight, whenever, when I'm finished, don't go quite there now. Just I've got one minute to go. So stick with me. Uh, if you go to wow, a sorry, book. Oh, no, it's been a long Facebook Live, I'm sorry. If you go to bookawowcall.com, uh, then it'll have a calendar there. You can book in a time with one of our WOW team uh, tomorrow or the next day, whatever suits you, or the next day after that. And they will have just a little 10 or 15 minute call with you. There's not much that you need to ask. You've just seen all the stuff here. So therefore, it's just a matter of then determining if this thing is for you. Most of the time it is. But if you do have a nail, uh, sorry, a, t a, a toenail cutting business, maybe it's not for you. But for 99.9% .9 of businesses, we find this is a pretty good fit. So it's just a matter of going to bookawowcall.com, uh, put your details in there and you can actually book right straight away it has a calendar what times are available tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day so you just pick a time to book the call in it's only a 10 or 15 minute call and it's not a pitch fest believe me if you just say oh look you know it's not for me fine okay we'll just go our separate ways uh, now you can start from 497 dollars so therefore the first payment you would make is 497 dollars and i'm saying that to you because if that scares you then of course there's no use ringing okay but if you're you know, launching a business, if you've got an established business and your marketing has fallen flat and sales are flatlined, I think it's a pretty good investment. Okay, so you can start from $497. Uh, it is a 12 month program, however. So, therefore, if you, yep, go to bookawowcall.com, you can get that underway and uh, you'll be talking to one of our people tomorrow. That's about it, guys. Um, Thank you very much for those that have hung in uh, this time. I think we've got a pretty good percentage of who started and who's still there, which shows that this has been reasonably engaging. Uh, if you enjoyed it, could you maybe boost my uh, ego by saying something nice below? JD, I enjoyed it. Um, if you hate me, put JD. No, don't put anything. If you hate me and you didn't enjoy it, then I'd say, why the hell did you hang around till now? <laughs> <laughs> if I hate someone, I'm out of there. Uh, so you must be a masochist. Uh, but if you did enjoy it, can you just put something in there to say JD enjoyed uh, or whatever you want to put in there? Um, because that boosts my ego. And when you are a business coach of this nature and you do seminars, uh, being a wanker, uh, then of course I enjoy getting little pats on the back. So thank you very much for that. If you enjoyed this, we're going to be doing, uh, you know, this sort of stuff uh, reasonably regularly. It won't be quite as long as this, but we'll be doing stuff like this reasonably regularly. Um, but if you really want me and, and you've got access to me via the fortnightly Zoom call and you want these resources, then you might like to go to bookawowcall.com and have a talk to one of my team tomorrow or the next day and you can get started for $497. I think that's a pretty reasonable, modest investment to get all of those resources that you just saw me rant and rave about. And if you would like me personally to become your quasi-marketing manager and basically put one of those extensive, customised marketing plans together for your business covering offline and online, 
Uh, you can see I do that with my eyes closed. I've been doing this for you know a lot of years and uh, there's not too many businesses that I can't get involved with and give them a game changer. And just before I go, the reason I say that is because normally on the first hour call that I have with a new private client, uh, I do my best to come up with what I call the wheels on luggage idea. And the reason I've nicknamed it the wheels on luggage idea is because you know what? The wheels on luggage only came about because an airline pilot in 1989... 20 years after we put man on the moon, right, got sick of dragging his luggage around the airports. And he went home and went to his garage after speaking to a buddy and he said, look, I'm just going to put wheels on this damn luggage. And guess what? He never flew a plane again. That was a simple, simple idea. I mean, I, I don't think as humans we're that smart. We put Neil Armstrong on the moon in 1969. It took us 20 more years to put wheels on bloody luggage. What were we smoking for 20 years? <laughs> okay. But then again, we only put the red and green lights in the Westfield Shopping centre car parks about a few years ago. Up until then, we're you know, driving around chasing Esme to find out whether she's going to get in her car and we can steal her spot. So, look, the thing is, is that I try and come up with a wheels on luggage, like really mind-blowing idea. I can't guarantee it, of course. You can never guarantee this. But my aim is that when someone comes on as a private client, I look for a game changer as quickly as possible. And in the Greater Building Society's instance, it was get rid of interest rates and just turn. By the way, that was a cost-neutral promotion for them. So when I said to them, what do you do outside of other banks? They said, well, we've got a 1% honeymoon rate. I said, well, every bank's got that. I said, how about you give me the 1% honeymoon rate, which on a half a million dollar loan for that first year would be five grand. We'll give that to a discount travel company who will give us an excellent holiday for that, probably worth double. And we'll turn that into a Happy Meal toy. We'll say, swap your home loan to the greater and we'll give you a free holiday, a free vacation. It was cost neutral. They were giving up that same amount of money via a 1% honeymoon rate up until then that every bank was doing. And I said to them, well, you want to be different from every bank. So my philosophy is think of what discount you're willing to give and turn that into a Happy Meal toy and you just watch what happens. And I'll leave you with this thought. If uh, I was running a hair salon and uh, instead of having a sign outside that says 10% off, I would say, no, 10% uh, off is not going to get anyone. I mean, Groupon's 50%. What I would say is that for every $50 you spend in my hair salon, I will give you a movie point. And when you get 10 movie points, which means you spend $500, I will give you a $50 movie voucher. In other words, a ticket for two to go to Hoyt's cinemas. Now, $50 on the 500 is 10%. So it's the same 10% that would have been given away if you gave up 10% with a little sign outside your hairdressing salon that no one would have ever you know, reacted to. And guess what? Because ladies you know, go into hair salons and spend 100 dollars $150, $200, it won't be long before they're hooked into getting those 10 points. They're not going to go anywhere else. The hair salon down the road can offer a Groupon deal of 50% off. They're not going to go there because what they've done is turn their discount into a Happy Meal toy. So I'll leave you with that thought. You always think about turning whatever you were prepared to give away as a discount into a Happy Meal uh, toy or into what I call a value add. That's it guys, so therefore if you'd like to book a call and you're interested in becoming part of this environment, which you can see is pretty vibrant, it's pretty ideas driven, then just go to bookawowcall.com. I'll bring it up on the screen just once more because it's a, a, it's, it's a, it's a blatant uh, plug. I, I can't bring it up, sorry, I thought I could. I'm, I've got buttons here that were supposed to come up on the screen. Uh, okay, there you go, uh, book a wow, because I'm, I'm pretty clever after all. I can press that button, okay, bookawowcall.com. And if you enjoyed this and uh, you would like more of this stuff, then Yep, book a call and you can get underway straight away for as low as $497. And if I don't sound like an infomercial, <laughs> you know what? I bag out all these other speakers and seminar people for sounding like an infomercial. I think I'm turning into one. I think I am turning into one of those seminar speakers. I, I'll try not to. But if you enjoyed it, uh, leave some nice comments below. And if you didn't enjoy it, then don't tell anyone. Okay, do not tell anyone. And I hope you die in your sleep uh, if you did not enjoy this. Okay, over and out, guys. Glad you were with us. And thank you for having dinner with me, even though you had to bring your own dinner. Over and out. Guys, I just thought I'd come on for a few moments because I know that a few of you did actually ask uh, some questions, okay? So therefore, I'll just get my phone and uh, one of my crew are going to give it to me and uh, I'll answer a few of those questions for you. Um, 
Look, the essence of what I was talking about in that you know, Facebook Live presentation uh, is all about making sure that you work very hard to take their eyes off the price. You do not want your prospects to be buying your products or services on price because guess what, you know, you want to maintain margin. And what I do constantly for businesses that are around our environment is that we teach them how to take people's eyes off the price. And that hairdressing salon one, which is the example I gave you um, towards the end of my presentation, that was a classic. And we've done that for hair salons after hair salons after hair salons, you know. Um, we have all sorts of different businesses on board and every now and again you will find one business owner will say to me, look, you know, we just, you know, we, we have to live with price discounts. And I say to them, no, you don't. You can turn your price discounts into value adds. Let me just see if there's some questions here I can answer. Well done, JD. That's very nice of Ronnie to say that. And Justin Coucher said, well done. A good finish, says Matthew. Wow, terrific. And let me see if I can see some sledges. Uh, I hate you and I hope you go away. <laughs> no, I'm joking, all right? Uh, thanks, JD. It was great to go over this again, says Scott Boswell. I was at the October event, uh, Solar Business. Uh, and by the way, in terms of solar, uh, I know that, uh, that you guys have been through the ropes because of various government subsidies and blood you know, all sorts of changes in rules and regulations. Um, yeah, we've got, we've had some solar businesses on board and there is a way to really, really spike your inquiry level. But anyway, uh, obviously, if you know, come on board, we'll, we'll tell you that. I can't go through individual uh, industries. Uh, let me just see here, what do we got, what do we got, what do we got? Uh, no, I don't know why, but uh, when I'm scrolling through here, I've only got five questions, okay? Um, I'll ask one of my career guys, we've got five questions here, so I don't know where the hundred are, but anyway. Um, so look, uh, how about, I, I'll, I'll, I want to give you a, a, a funny story. There was a guy in uh, Los Angeles who came to an event I was holding at Santa Monica. And uh, he was a big black American guy, uh, twice the size of Mel Meninga. And uh, he came along and uh, he said to me, look, I want to join your private coaching program. But he said, uh, look, I love everything. It was a, you know, it was a like half day event. So it was a full four hours that I had to do the song and dance. And I can't do the American accent, but uh, it was words something like, hey, JD, I loved it, but I'd, I'd, I'd like to join your program, but I've got an interesting business where I am different. I am different. And I said, oh, well, how different? He goes, I'm a funeral parlor. I'm a funeral business. And I said, uh, okay, right out. And he says, so how are you going to do this direct response thing with, with that? And I said, well, have you ever been to Australia? And he said, yeah, look, I've been to Australia a number of times. And uh, I said, good, okay. Well, in that case, when you went to supermarkets and places like that, you probably would have come across our flybys program. And he goes, yeah, yeah, everywhere I went, they asked me, did I have a flybys car? And I said, good, okay. Well, for you as a funeral parlor, then uh, the moment you come on board, we'll launch the die buys program. <laughs> I was taking the piss, of course, and he said to me, what? What? And I, I'll just try and ask my crew to be a little bit quiet. I've got people around me at the moment who think it's their Facebook Live. Um, but anyway, yeah, so therefore uh, I said to him, yeah, you know, it's, a, it's basically a die buys program. And he goes, what? And I said, yeah, so what will happen is that every time you actually, you know, refer uh, one of your friends or relatives who have passed away and then you burn them, uh, then you get a die buys point and then you save up a certain amount of die buys point, uh, points to you know, get a free headstone. Uh, I'm trying to remain you know, sort of straight faced and he, was, he had the WTF above his head and he went, I don't think that will, I, I said, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> And uh, look, I think it was very, very timely of me to tell him at that point I was joking because this guy's the size of a building. I think he was just about to smash me. Um, but yeah, look, it doesn't matter what business you're in. It's all about making sure that you turn what would be a discount into a value add. A car wash company, we had a car wash company come on board a little while ago. And uh, they said to me, look, you know, we're not getting enough cars through the automatic car wash. And I said, well, that's because you're not incentivising them and you're not collecting any data. So therefore, people would just put their car through the wash and they'd come out the other end at 20 or $30 and they'd piss off. That was it. So I said to them, create a reward scheme. Uh, and the reward scheme was that every time you had your car washed, you got a movie point. Um, why do I pick on cinema movie points. The reason I do is because if you're in a business that's genuinely got a wide demographic target audience, then you want to um, look for uh, a reward that's universally appealing to both sexes and all ages. That's why free holiday works with the Greater Building Society, okay? So that's why cinema movie tickets work. That's why petrol vouchers or petrol discounts work. Uh, and even if it's an over 18 audience, it's why alcohol works. So therefore, we've had instances where butcher retailers have said that, you know, for every $50 you spend with me, we will give you one um, uh, beer point or one wine point. And what will happen is that when you save X number of beer points, you get a carton of Crown Lager. 
Now, they make sure that you know, if it's a point for every $50 worth of meat and then you spend $500 on meat over that month, you've got 10 points, then, of course, you will get a carton of Crown Lager, which will cost them $50 at Dan Murphy's, uh, but you've spent 500 So the Crown Lager is still a 10% discount. It's just that you've turned that into a much, much sexier Happy Meal toy. Let me just ask, uh, let me put my specs on and see if I can see a few of these questions here. Uh, Maureen Wise says, contests are brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, Tony says, uh, Facebook, boosts worth pay- uh, Facebook boosts worth paying for. Yeah, Tony, if you're still on board, they definitely are worth it. But you see, look, email isn't dead, but it's pretty close to it. Okay, why? Because like the fat kid at Sizzlers, we've abused it. Okay, so we've actually all put out too many emails and the open rates now for most people uh, are in single digits. And so therefore, this particular Facebook Live formula just makes sense. Because when you build up your audience, and I won't go through all that again, it's in the presentation that I've just given, but when you build up your audience, what happens is that you can get the analytics from Facebook that tell you uh, how long you watched my presentation. And you might say, well, okay, for anyone that's watched at 50%, then we'll actually retarget them with ads. That just makes so much more sense than just posting boosts. Oh, sorry, boost. <laughs> boost, boosting posts. I'm not saying that you shouldn't boost posts, or maybe post booths, or just go into a phone booth, I don't know, anything that sounds like that. Um, or go to Boost Juice, just go there. So I'm getting silly. You know why I'm getting silly is because my wife only put water inside here. She did not put alcohol. And, you know, that's why I'm leaving her, okay? Don't say anything to her. Oh, shit, this is on Facebook. Uh, so therefore, look, the thing is, is that, um, uh, for her best friend, by the way. Uh, so therefore, the thing is, yes, still do boosts, but, you know, this Facebook Live formula is gold. And I didn't get to go through it tonight, but uh, if you uh, join uh, my program, he says very, very blatantly, then we are going to be running a training session on how to run Facebook Lives, uh, okay? Uh, I've learned a lot from studying some of the best operators overseas, and uh it is dynamite if you get it right. Now, I can't tell you how much money I've made out of tonight's one. I'll let you know that. Well, I won't let you know that. I was going to say I'll let you know that in a couple of days' time. No, I won't. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you anything. Um, but, yeah, these things, if you get them right, are wildly valuable because you can then track people who have been watching for a certain amount of time and you can say, okay, anyone that's watched 30 or 40 or 50% of it, I'm going to retarget them with advertising, then that makes sense because you're putting your ads in front of warm prospects. Uh, let me see, what have we got here? Uh, ba-da, 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 let me see, enjoyed this, JD, lots of laughs. Uh, don't use the hipster, from don't use the hipster. <laughs> Look, if you have got a man bun or you've got a ponytail, please, it was a joke. I know in this political correct world that we're in at the moment, you just can't, you know that Seinfeld and apparently a few other comedians will not do college campus uh, graduation shows anymore. Uh, the big comedians would get paid a lot of money by college campuses to go along and do the big graduation show, like an Academy Awards for the colleges, you know, universities. They won't do them anymore because they've got to sign a form that's a mile long that says that they won't uh, criticise small people, tall people, fat people, you know, thin people. They won't criticise any nationality. It's comedy, for God's sake. Stop being so precious. And so uh, I read an article where Seinfeld and the rest of these comedians said, forget it. It's comedy. If you can't take a joke, then forget it. I'm not even going to bring up millennials, okay, bringing all this stuff in. Don't you think, I'll tell you something that pisses me off, aside from paper clips, because they never work, paper clips, just get rid of paper clips, staple the damn thing, just staple it, okay? And the other thing that pisses me off, of course, are those office dividers that come that high. You can still hear what they're saying on there. Don't you want to even put that little dicky thing there? It means not, build a wall. Do what Donald's doing, build a damn wall and have an office, for God's sake. You know, those open offices, what bullshit that is. Jeez, I'm wound up, aren't I? And the other thing that I hate is having documents without page numbers. How many times have you been in a, you know, a meeting and they go, OK, well, flip over to this. You go, what page is that? They go, oh, it's the one with the yellow graph on it. Every page has got a yellow graph on it, OK? And what really pisses me off at the moment, because you need to know this, OK? Um, this is almost like a counselling session to me. I don't know who the hell I'm talking to. I'm just looking at a camera. But nonetheless, uh, I, I believe there's a few of you still there. You must be masochists, okay? Go and get some dinner, for God's sake. Uh, but before I do go, and I will be gone in the next couple of minutes because I have to get some dinner, uh, and it's all about me, uh, the thing that really pisses me off at the moment, Woolworths and Coles have decided that we're working for them. What? I went to Woolworths last night. There's one checkout check. 
okay? And I didn't want to go anywhere near her. She looked like a Gestapo. She looked like a Jetstar girl, okay? So therefore I thought, no, I'm not going there. If she looked like a virgin check-in girl, I would have gone. So she looked like the, anyone came near her. She was just going to throw star knives or something or stab them through the eye with a pencil. So I went to the self-serve checkout. We should be getting discounts. We should be getting 5 or 10% off. They've got us working for them for free. And now they've got us paying for the damn bags. And the airlines have been doing that for quite some time. Luckily, because I fly quite a bit, I'm a member of that Virgin Velocity Club, and, and because I'm very important, I don't know whether you know that, but I'm a very, very important person, so I get to actually go into the Velocity red carpet area and pretend to be important. Um, but, you know, if I was just an ordinary person, like perhaps some of you, uh, there, there's a good chance that I'm going to be on that queue that will go for freaking miles around the airport, and then when I get up to the counter, there's no one there. I've got to actually put my bag on the conveyor belt. Have I gone off on a rant or what? Anyway, look, go and have some dinner. I'll answer one more question before we go. What do we got here? Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -dum. How can we apply this to real estate? Oh, great question. Who's this? This is Lisa, Lisa Pizarro. Lisa, let me tell you this. I have got the game changer of all game changers. And if I had a drum, if I had a Ringo Starr bloody drums here, I'd do a drum roll. Let me tell you how you use this for real estate. My son-in-law, okay, our 27-year-old daughter's married to a lovely guy who's 30-ish and he's gone on to real estate. I said, look, I can help you make a gazillion dollars really, really quickly. Uh, I've had lots and lots of real estate agents on and do you think I can convince one of them to do this, okay? Uh, and please, if you're in the real estate game, take this as a joke, but there's been a few on board my program who can't spell IQ. So therefore, uh, what I've done is that uh, I said to my son-in-law, tell you what to do. Uh, to get a listing, which is where they make their money, selling listings, then you have to get appraisals, of course. And, of course, what they do is send out those dicky little bloody DL leaflets that say, you know, we've got buyers in your area. Would you like to get a free appraisal for your home? Like, 1942, that was put together by Fred Flintstone. So I said, uh, okay, well, tell me, what is the, to most of these agents, what is the, how's it work? They say, oh, we put out 10,000, you know, sort of in, like leaflets to uh, invite them to get a, an appraisal of their home, which is a valuation of their home. Uh, or we put some Facebook ads out and we ask, would you like a free evaluation of your home? And then when we give that valuation, 1.2 million or 800,000, whatever it might be, about one or two out of 10 will turn into a listing. Some say to me, look, four or five out of 10, but, you know, generally speaking, it's about 10 or 20% of those appraisals turn into a listing. Uh, well, okay, right on. So therefore, let's just say if 20% of all your appraisals turn into a listing at some stage, a month later or two months later or five months later or instantly, then does it stand to reason that if that's a percentage, just get more appraisals? And I went, yeah, if only we could. I said, I can get you, uh, I don't know, 10,000 appraisals tomorrow. How would you like that? Now, Lisa, I bet you that's got your attention. Uh, this is a wheels and luggage idea, so just be prepared for this, Okay. And you'll get more of this, Lisa, if you decide to join my private coaching program. Uh, so how it works is this. Just bring uh, kids in from university or Airtasker, wherever you want, okay? And you actually produce 10,000 checks. And I've got this in a formula, by the way. I haven't got it here to show to the camera. But it looks like a Commonwealth Bank check. And what you do is that you go through RP Data, which is, of course, the software program that you can just tap in any address in Australia and it will tell you what the value of that house is uh, based on similar sales of, in that particular area. And then you would actually turn that into a door hanger. So not a letterbox drop, but a door hanger. So like your menu that you get at the hotel, there's a hole in the top of it. Let me just get my pen out here and let me just show you. So therefore... Okay, so therefore, it's a door hanger that looks something like that, okay? And this here is the Commonwealth Bank check, and it says $1.8 million. Now, when my wife and myself get home tonight, it's on the front door, and it says, uh, listen, we've valued your home, it's worth at least $1.8 million, and on the back of it, if you turn that around, Obviously, it's blank at the moment, but if you turn that around, there'll be all the details about your real estate agent and all the credentials that you want to get across and why you're the Gordon Ramsay of the real estate industry. I'm telling you that what will happen then is 10,000 appraisals have gone out, okay, and you might not do it all at once. I mean, that's really avalanche, but you might do 500 at a time, 500 at a time. Uh, and guess what? I had one real estate agent over in another state on the other side of Australia from me, I'm on the Gold Coast, do it, and it went nuts. Okay, and I said to him, what happened? He said, oh, bloody hell, that was unreal. I put a check on everyone's doorstep and we had some uni students come in and they just went through RP data. They've got to actually handwrite the check. So therefore, you've got to make sure that they handwrite $1.2 million. So it looks like, you know, one of these, whatever it is, it's sharp, what is it, uh, Sharpie pens. So it really looks real. So the check looks real, even though it's a door hanger. And then on the flip side, it's got all your contact details. I'm telling you that if my wife 
and myself got home tonight and there was some figure there because we haven't had our house valued for a long time. That, that, I mean, who, who values caravans? I mean, I don't know. I, I haven't valued our caravan for a while. Um, and so therefore, uh, the point is, is that if it said, you know, one point X million or two points something, we'd be ringing up that agent the next day to get them to come out to confirm that quote because RP data gives you what they feel is the value. But of course, that changes when the real estate comes out, real estate agent comes out. I'm telling you, can you imagine if all of a sudden you put out 10,000 appraisals and you got maybe not 20%, it might only be five or 10%, but I tell you what, you'd have a hell of a lot more listings. One last thing. I had a four-wheel drive. These are just, to me, game changers, okay? And I'm showing off, but we had a four-wheel drive exclusive mechanic in Melbourne, in the Turak area in Melbourne, which is an upmarket area if you don't live in Victoria. And he said to me, oh, look, I've tried all this online stuff and Facebook and this, that and the other, and it's just not, we want to flush out people only with four-wheel drives. And I said, well, that's pretty easy. And he said, uh, how? I said, we just get uni students to go around of an afternoon. You can't hide a four-wheel drive, just like you can't hide a caravan. I've done the same thing. That's why it came to mind when I did the gag about caravans. You just simply get a kid after school to go around on his little motorbike, and uh, he just takes down the addresses of everyone who's got a four-wheel drive in the classy areas. He's jaw-dropped, a bit like the pizza delivery with the black tie. It's bang. Instant game changer, instant game changer. So therefore, that's what he did. He had uh, four or five university students go around on their motorbikes and they just took down the addresses. And when they took down the addresses, then what he did is he put an exclusive letterbox drop in their letterbox and actually knocked on the door, offering them a special four-wheel drive servicing because they are specialists in just four-wheel drive. And his turnover just like crazy. I can't give you the numbers, but crazy. And a caravan company did the same thing out of Newcastle. They said to me, how do we actually... They were just pissing money up against the wall, advertising on TV and the radio and stupid ads on the side of buses and the backs of taxis. When was the last time you bought anything off the side of a bus, by the way? Never. When was the last time you bought anything off the electronic signs that go around the football matches of a weekend? Never. And yet there'll be millions of dollars spent on those every weekend. When was the last time you bought anything off the back of a taxi? Never. So all of these marketing gurus out there are telling you to piss money up against the wall and maybe you're doing it. So you've got to flip all that into a direct response marketing. And what we did for the caravan company was exactly the same. Uh, you can get Airtasker to do it, but just probably cheaper if you get your own uni students. And all they do is go around the area that you're you know, operating in and just write down the addresses that have got a, a caravan in the driveway. You cannot hide a caravan, okay? It's not, it's not hideable. Is there a word called hideable? I don't know. You can't hide it. And so therefore they took down their names and addresses and then they just door knocked and said, listen, your caravan looks like it's 15 years old. We've got this brand new caravan offer at the moment where you get this. And, well, you wouldn't believe it, the offer that they had because they're my client was buy a caravan, get a free holiday. <laughs> you see, if you come up with a good, you know, offer like that, milk the shit out of it. Uh, by the way, have I told you that I work with Jerry Seinfeld? Okay, I've milked that for quite a number of years. Okay, guys, look, that's about it from me. We'll let you go and have some dinner. Thank you for joining us. And uh, as I said, if you're interested in private coaching, which means you're probably doing a few hundred thousand dollars turnover or more, then just type in private below and then we'll organise a call with me tomorrow or the next day. And if you're interested in you know, the Academy program, which is $497 a month, we think it's pretty spectacular. Uh, just go to bookawowcall.com and then book a call with one of my guys tomorrow and uh, or the next day, and they'll have a little 10-minute conversation with you. And if you're interested in moving forward, they'll just get you underway. Thanks, guys. Look forward to uh, hopefully meeting you and doing something with you. Okay.